The Dream Team, number four. Every time I get together with these guys, it's always a blast. You're not going to have a coherent, thought-out, well-planned conversation here. We just get together and we talk about what we're thinking about, what we're researching, all the cool stuff that makes us excited. For us, it's just like time to relax. So if you're looking for a stream of consciousness, some kind of method to this madness, there's not one. Uh, But this one's super long. And if you stick around, you might learn something or at least find out something that you didn't know before. Oh, and... No disrespect to Mark Sims, or anybody else for that matter. Got kind of carried away at some points of this, and uh, I think it'll be completely evident, but sometimes it's just good to unload. So here you go. Have fun. It's going to be a wild ride, and we get into some weird stuff. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, There's a lot of weird edits, right? We're in the middle of a conversation, something just clips, and I didn't even try to hide it. Some of the stuff we talked about was just too wild that we couldn't put out. Other stuff was completely off the record that we didn't want to reveal. And the other stuff was just, well, I don't know. The Dream Team, number four. The option. <laughs> there we uh, go. Sweet. Yeah. Did I give you yeah, the, like, yeah, you were allowed yeah, to, yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, I've, okay. I've got permissions. <laughs> okay, cool. Have, um, have, speaking speaking of uh, like plants and, and the intelligence stuff, have either of you seen the documentary on Netflix? Fuck Fantastic yeah, man. Fungus? Oh, Ooh, dude, I, that, I watched right, that right. and then I saw your thing you did because I was thinking <laughs> yeah, along yeah. the same thing, man. Yeah. Have, have, have oh, you dude, seen it, Jean Luc? Have you seen that thing? I haven't seen it. No, it's called Fantastic. I, I, read, I, read, I read something you did on it. Though. Like, who, is it who's the host of that? Is it Paul like, Stamets. Paul Stamets. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Read, he's been, on, he's been on Joe Rogan a couple times and he's done like a lot of big interviews. He's he's awesome, man. Like, he's just, he, and he's an amateur. Like, you know, he's, he's just someone who's kind of got really interested into it and then become a professional in the field. But, I, I, yeah, like the the documentary on Netflix was awesome when it was talking about the like the mycelial network, and it just makes yeah. you think. That's the, it, I don't know. For me, it makes me oh. think it's the planet's brain. It seems like the brain of the planet, you know, or the neural network for sure. Yeah, the, the, yeah, like the neural network. Yeah, it's like mushrooms. Are, I mean, I, I don't know much about the science behind it all, but aren't they sort of classified almost outside of planet and outside of mm-hmm. animal? They're like yeah, yeah, the <laughs> yeah. They're like. They're kind of halfway and halfway between a plant and a and an animal. Like they're their own they're, genus, they're, aren't they? Yeah, they're their own. They're their own separate thing. But we're like more closely related to fungi than like most things. It's really weird. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, that's right. It yeah. kind of in, explains in the documentary how very early on, like there was a split between the two paths of evolution. And one was the kind of network underground path, which is what became the mycelial network. And the other was single cell organisms, which became mammals. And, and so there's this kind of bifurcation billions and billions, you know, like way back in the beginning and like what I love about it and something that I kind of talked about in my, in my little, uh, my little video about the mycelial network is that you know, the, the surface world had <clears throat> had all these apocalypses and decimations over like, you know, millions of years and resets, but the underground network hasn't. And it kind of yeah, makes yeah. you think like, damn, has that thing just been evolving, like evolving, evolving, yeah. evolving quietly underground with, without really much any disturbance? You know, it's outlived the dinosaurs, it outlived the younger dryas, it outlived all of that. And then here yeah, these, yeah. these little yeah. things sprout out of it. And when you eat them, you meet God. <laughs> <So Yeah. laughs> it's like, you know, what's going on there? <laughs> Right. Um, do you know? Um, do you remember um, a while back? You know when the, the, the Venus thing was going on in the news, or what they were saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, in the like, in the atmosphere, there. Yeah, yeah. And then I can't remember how it was, but it was. It, I was reading about a lot about that, and it was about I mean, um, is it cyanobacteria or something like that? And uh, yeah, and it was linking back to Antarctica, and then got onto something about the old expeditions in like nineteen twelve, like um, Douglas Mortham. And they were drawing pictures in their diaries of caves full of man-sized oh, mushrooms. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. And and you know, talking about like this world, kind of separate basically. underworld. Yeah, really odd, man. Like, yeah, well, and, you like, know that, uh, isn't that cyano uh, cyanoplast? And, and I got that wrong. Cyan, isn't cyanobacteria? Cyano, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, cyano. So, but yeah, yeah, but isn't that part of the blue green algae thing too? That's right, yeah. And like, I'm trying to remember why I linked the two together. I think what it was is because because of Russia, Venus, it was the Russian thing, right? Yeah, it was a late by Carl thing, right? Yeah, there, there was. But Carl Sagan had said, like back in the '70s, um, he goes, "If we ever wanted to uh, make Venus habitable, the way we'd do it is to inject cyanobacteria into its atmosphere, 
Um, I, I don't know why, but I was that was what I was reading about, and then mm-hmm. it linked to the like Baikal stuff, which is obviously full of this stuff. Yeah. Um, and then obviously all the crazy stuff that the myths and the legends around Lake Baikal, which fascinate me. So but here's something. There's links. a correlation to that. This is fucking crazy. So like, I live next to Lake Erie, right in the U.S. It's right here, about Ohio, Michigan. You know, New York, Canada. So uh, I don't know, 2000. 10 so like 10 years ago or something like that maybe 11 12 there was this cyano uh, bacteria bloom in the lake mm. and it and that's where we get all of our fresh water right so there's like this you go out in the middle of the lake and there's this thing that sucks up all the water and then pulls it back in from the lake and then you know they they clean it and everybody that's what we drink well this bloom this algae bloom was all around it and it was toxic and even after they put chlorine and all this other shit in there it mm-hmm. still was really, really toxic. Like I woke up one day and my mom calls me. She's like, don't take a shower. Don't brush your teeth. Don't. I'm like, what the fuck? And I look out the window and there's a, uh, like a five ton army truck with a dude on the back of it with a gun and like oh, pallets, shit. full, pallets full of water. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And like, it was so toxic that if you boiled it, it made it worse. Like usually you <laughs> have a boil thing and you're like, make it, you know, you can drink your water after you boil it. But it was like, don't even put, put it on you. Like, don't, I'm not, I was like, well, cool. I just took a shower. I just brushed my teeth and I just, <laughs> like, I just like all of this stuff. Right. So it was like this huge thing. They spent like millions of dollars to fix it. And then now Noah has like an, a satellite that tracks the bloom every year on the lake to see how much Whoa. of this bacteria and where it's at because like, and they were talking about the farmers that they're using all these fertilizers and from the fertilizers from the runoff is going into the lake and the lake and then it gets really hot like it is now and then it, these blooms happen yeah, and, and then like so. it could really kill you like it literally killed some people you yeah, know it could kill you but geez. like I, but i'm this whole thing i'm where i'm going with this is this i I, t- I found this guy online and i've reached out to him to a couple times and to get an interview but he's got some of the craziest videos of ufos going into lake erie um mm. and, and uh, coming out and he was talking about all kinds of stuff about uh, meeting all these people and uh, he's saying that the, the Anunnaki have a base under the lake and all this stuff. Oh, and, I, and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? So anyways, I want to talk to this dude just to see what he's saying. Cause he's got some of the most amazing videos of like lights, lights over the lake. It's no fly zone because there's a nuclear reactor right there by Cleveland. Light, light, wow. light in the water. You can see the light yeah. in the water disappear and then vice versa. But I'm is, thinking. Is this the guy that kind of looks like a kind of like aging rock star? Yeah, so that's the dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that that's guy. Yeah, 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 that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so like so <laughs> yeah, like he looks wild yeah he looks super wild and he's talking about like he was talking to um he was talking to bigelow and he was like yeah bigelow yeah. knows this and he's dra- name dropping these other people that are like part of the nsa and they told him about the anunnaki base and i'm like do they just telling him all this shit? but anyways sorry the full <laughs> circle was that like okay there's that activity that's documented and all that shit's going on and that that algae that bacteria is there right so antarctica same kind of deal like bacall same kind of deal it's like what is it about this stuff that's special uh, or bringing UAPs to this whole thing, right? Well, the idea, I don't know. I mean, because that's the thing. It's like there'd be, maybe there'd be scientists, dudes watching this who are just like, oh, these people are idiots. <laughs> but like the, the links for me as a non scientist seeing it crop up in stuff like newspaper articles from the 70s with Carl Sagan saying it should be used to create a, what would they call it, terraformer environment. Um, and it popped up in something that Brian Rommel, that's who it was, he was posting that stuff about the Antarctic expeditions. Um, yeah, really interesting links. And then obviously the Lake Baikal stuff. Because uh, in Lake Baikal, I can't remember what it's called. Is it graphene or something like that? That big, I can't remember what it is. But they're mining out from under the water this type of ice. And the ice, when you burn it, is full of energy, yeah? Wow. Um, I, remember, like I remember seeing that video you sent me where they're actually burning ice from that yeah, lake, yeah. the ice starts it's, on fire. Oh shit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that. It's literally kind of like, it's weird. I mean, they're pulling it out of the water, like they're pulling it out from deep into the Lake Baikal. And uh, around the, the coast, you know, around this coast uh, of the lake are all of the literally Tibetan Buddhist shrines and the shamans there. Yeah? So again, you go back to the Tibetan stuff, it's wild, yeah? Like, because uh, the Russians obviously, that, that border, um, going across into you know, Siberia and then over into like uh, Mongolia and further into to China, Tibet. Um, it really mixes. And uh, like, so the culture, when you go into that part of Russia, is very much like that here. Yeah? So again, you start to get these beliefs of ancient underwater beings or beings living in the rocks. Um, the same sort of legends that we talked about before on the, the Tibetan stuff, you know? Yeah. Really interesting, man. 
uh, like it's like those cultures steeped in that stuff, subterranean cultures and wise men being taught by these things. It's cool. Makes you wonder, yeah. like, kind of makes you wonder what what folklore is real. Like, you know, like all how of far, it. Well, all yeah, of it. no, for real. Like, yeah, like <laughs> like fairies and imps and gnomes and dwarves and all this kind of stuff. Like, you know, maybe it it mm. it really exists but in a way that's yeah. really hard to see i don't know <laughs> like, you know what's interesting you know, well, well, like that, that's what tom delong like even even tom delong goes down that route like mm-hmm. he went down that route i mean i know i know he's pretty wild but he went down that route in the secret machines books he was talking about like the fae like the fairies yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. like yeah like that's probably not even space ufo alien spacecraft that's that's other things within this spectrum that we don't really understand things that can live in the rocks or things that live in a different dimension. They pass through the rocks. Who knows? Maybe they go well, through the mountain and there's suddenly a, you know, a, a city that we can't even access because it's a different yeah, stuff. Yeah. Different yeah. Dimensional twist of the frequency knobs. But you know, it's like, wow, what the fuck is real? Well, <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I found that's interesting. Going back to what you originally started on with the shroom stuff, like the mushrooms, like when you actually start looking at, kind of the idea of what is through the veil and people seeing things and all that. But when you see them and it's totally out of the ordinary, some of the experiences that people have, they are almost hallucinatory, aren't they? But they happen in times usually of normality or when you think things are normal. So they become really real. And I think they are real uh, for most people. But like, what I'm trying to go with it is that one thing I read that was interesting in that book, The Serious Conspiracy, if anyone needs to People need to read that. It's brilliant. Lynn Picknett and Clive. I can't remember what his name is, but it's great. But they basically, they wrote this book talking about how the whole of the, the serious sort of theory about aliens coming from Sirius and Egypt and all the stuff leading up to Andrea Purich and the Nine and Yuri Geller and Hal Potter and all that stuff, yeah? Um, they wrote this book kind of saying the whole thing was kind of almost like, well, a conspiracy based around almost like a, a societal change as opposed to actual real aliens. It was like a, a new world order kind of uh, methodology to create a spiritual change. But um, where I was going with that was, hang on a sec. <laughs> Here it <laughs> comes. Sec, yeah. Here it yeah, comes. I'll have to cut that back in and say, <laughs> oh, what was it? Oh, mate. Yeah, I'll tell you what it was. So they went back. And in 2000 and whatever, 10 years later or 15 years after the first put the book out, they added a chapter where they said, what we think aliens contact is, is mushrooms. They actually did that, man. And they, there's a whole chapter at the end, which is about how real contact comes from what people like Terence McKenna were doing. They talk about Andrea Purich again in the nine. There's a lot of mushrooms involved. Mm-hmm. And stuff, the, the idea that apparently Yuri Geller was part of that too. Rituals, maybe ritual stuff. I don't know. Like the idea that the mushrooms come back into it, talking to ancient Egyptian gods, the Nine. Yeah, you, yeah. if you look into it, that's yeah. just permeating it. That's, yeah. uh, Psychedelic, that's, really what, it. that's what Terence McKenna, I, I, at least he, uh, he entertained that idea that it could be the, the UFO phenomenon and, and other phenomenons could be essentially, and this is what I think Carl Jung saw as the overmind, right? Like the, the kind of uh, the overarching consciousness of the planet giving us things that <clears throat> stimulate a certain response in, in humans. And I mean, it's really interesting. I, 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 cause I love Terrence McKenna. I don't think there's any secret to that. Most people know I, I, I you know, I find him to be just a brilliant guy and he has some amazing stories. I mean, one of the things that he said once which I thought was quite interesting because he's spoken about the UFO issue quite a few times, you know, in different lectures. And, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, it's something that he obviously had an interest in. And he spoke in conferences alongside Jacques Vallée and, and other people back in the day. But he, I remember him saying that he spoke to an entity. Uh, I think he was either referring, I think he was on psilocybin mushrooms. And he said that he spoke to an entity within that mushroom state and asked them, uh, you know, what, what is the deal with ufos what's what's going on with these ufos and uh, i think the response was something like we have disguised ourselves as an extraterrestrial invasion so as to not alarm you with what's really going on (laughs) 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 oh Oh, okay (laughs) okay really we're just mushrooms (laughs) (laughs) what 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 yeah i mean 
Dude, the serious yeah. thing though, that thing, the uh, Jean Luc, what was that book that you pushed me, uh, told me about? It was the, oh man, it was the the last one you did. It had a pyramid on the cover of it. It was it, oh, Stargate Conspiracy. Stargate Conspiracy, yeah. yeah. Almost, so I'll get into that yeah. book, and it's talking about. I can't remember the lady who was the channeler that they talked about in there, but basically she was channeling something, and it, and they said that Freemasonry. Um, was uh, created on Sirius, the planet Sirius, and then it was brought here. It was developed at Sirius, and it was brought here, and like you know, as the mystery school in, in Sirius, but it was brought here to teach man the mysteries and, and as an initiatory experience for man to you know communicate with them, and then it's evolved. And the authors were kind of like, well, her husband was kind of big in Freemasonry, so we don't know if she was just making the shit up or if it was like, or there was something mm -hmm. to it because after that, he kind of propagated that through masonry and you know push it along and to be completely honest there's nothing that i'm aware of that i was about serious. to ask yeah, no, the, yeah like there's nothing that goes yeah serious is the yeah. you know the dog star and that's where we get our right. from. but it's still kind of interesting to think that there's some kind of because i've always thought that there was a otherworldly connection to freemasonry in, in a lot of different ways and i don't know if it's just serious or everybody's just trying to like throw some a dart at something and hope it sticks but i think there's Ooh. definitely something to that man serious well, serious crops up a lot right well yeah it does i mean the, the guy who sort of introduced it into the mainstream like properly was the robert temple yeah um, temple that's it yeah you know, back in the 70s and like he, uh, yeah it was a great book but i mean for every great book like that there's a book counteracting it. Like, mm -hmm. for example, when I was away glamping. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, Can you explain for the audience what glamping is? It's like a, the, the best chalet I've ever seen in my life. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm camping. Yeah. There's like a sofa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what it was like. Cam it was, camping. Well, yeah, there's camp camping. Like, yeah. um, you had running water. Uh, you had electricity. You had... <laughs> basically, no, I didn't have any of that shit. I didn't have any of that. There's no electricity or anything like that. <laughs> oh, there wasn't? Like, um, yeah, you had a butler no, and no, everything. No. Yeah, right. You had yeah. refrigeration. Yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it, was just, it was a tent, <laughs> but it had, a wooden cool. base. it had a wooden base. Okay. And then, um, so that's better, isn't it? So it's kind of like... Yeah. Do you know what I imagine it's like is when... People go on. In fact, it is called a safari lodge, so it's like a safari thing, you know, like oh, yeah. safari lodge, like that. That's what it's like. And it's got and all it's like got loads of like rugs and cushions in it. Yeah, and there's yeah. a so sofa. You took me a picture of a fucking couch, man. Like, there was a couch like, in there. Um, do you know when you used to see pictures of Omar Gaddafi when he used to go to America or whatever, and he'd take an entire tent and put it in New York City? Yeah? <laughs> like, that, like, is that what you got? You got, the, you got the Gaddafi template. It's like, oh, yeah, of all uh, the ones, there was the Gaddafi, and you were like, I like that. I'm going to go for I that. I the Gaddafi one. Um, yeah. I, wore, I wore a lot of gold that week. <laughs> white. White suit. What, what, white whatever, whatever warlord's tents were available, is it just the Gaddafi or the, like various? The, the Bin Laden, well, the there Gaddafi. Was, there, was, there was a dangerous car set down the way. Uh, it looked pretty, pretty rad, but there was a lot of screaming coming out of it, so I bypassed that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway. So when, I was in, so when I was in the, yeah, when I was in this tent, um, in this sorry, lodge, uh, I was reading a book by a guy who you've probably seen on Twitter called Jason Colavito. You heard that name? Yes. Oh, isn't he the guy that wrote like a slam piece against Ross Colthart? He's like the super skeptic, right? I, I, he's a super skeptic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But do you know what? Though? A lot of the time, I don't know anything about these people because I was coming at it from a different side. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So like what that book that I read about was, it was linking together the idea that the whole serious mythos started with H.P. Lovecraft. Uh -huh. right? who was obviously a very, very smart guy and he mm -hmm. created incredible books and blah, 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 this entire sort of world and mythos and that he built up. And the way he did that, apparently, in Jason Colavito's book, um, was other writers at the time who were writing this, because it was Pulp Fiction that he was writing. Like he was mm -hmm. getting, at the time, it was getting put out in little mini periodicals and mm -hmm. digests and all that, yeah? And then... Um, He'd send other writers like him uh, the names of sort of like beasts or ideas or worlds and say, why don't you just randomly somewhere incorporate that into one of your next stories? So they'd start this like sort of sliding mythos of each other's places and worlds oh, and creatures. Pretty cool. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. So like, but anyway, off the back of that, apparently, the idea of this sort of worldly connection to Sirius, this is what I'm 
came from the book, uh, it started there and it sort of lodged itself in people's heads. And from that, you got Robert Temple mm. taking his mission out. I think it was him that went out to meet the Dogo. Did oh, you right. feel as as a as a guy that kind of really s- does specialize in diving deep into this kind of stuff? Did you hmm. feel like he gave a compelling argument, like within this book, for the origin of it being? Oh this? yeah, absolutely. But uh, at the same time, it was it, it, neither of the arguments are good enough to me. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I think Sirius is, uh, and I'm I'm probably wrong, <laughs> but is it Orion's belt? Is he frozen? Yeah, no. back. Oh, he was just like that on yeah. my screen. <laughs> hey, Where did I get to? Uh, no, Orion's to belt. Is, is Sirius Orion's belt? The, Sorry, st- the stars in the sky, is that Orion's belt? Like the three dots? Is that Sirius? Uh, no, no. I don't right. think so. Uh, no. It's, um, like, um, basically, because you got that, because that was the other thing. Another book came out after that, linking Orion's belt to the the pyramid of Giza, yeah. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, like yeah, that yeah. was Graham Hancock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. which does like, line up? Which does line up? Oh, but yeah, they do. They do. I mean, but it's like it's like with the Dogon and stuff like that. And, so the Dogon. The okay, that's where I was going with. It. I forgot about the Dogon tribe. That's where the whole. That's where the serious thing comes, right? The the Dogon. Well, that's where was, Robert Temple went. Linked. And, you know that. Well, actually, it wasn't him. There was some like earlier explorers who went into the study, but at the time. I can't remember what it was. I only read this book about two weeks ago, but I was I was sort of flipping. I'll be honest with you, Jason Colavito. The way I was not impressed. It, I was not impressed with his critiques of uh, of Ross's book, and yeah, he just I, my only exposure to this guy has been like as some sort of super debunker for the UFO world. So I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I respect I mean, his he, research ethic. He was a believer, apparently. Like oh. a believer. He was a believer. A believer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and now he's not. And the reason he said that now he's not is because he did his own research. To be fair, he has, yeah. He's written some quite a lot of books, and these books are now like fifteen years old, maybe. So he was debunking Robert Temple's serious mystery twenty years ago when I was still watching the X Files and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so he just put in some. He's put in some legwork. He's put in some homework. Yeah. Exactly. So you, you got to give some of these people credit, and they do research, and they they do you know they do interview people and blah blah blah. And the way I see it is, every time if I come on these one of these videos, or I type anything out, and I've just read Robert Temple's book, followed by a nice healthy dose of Graham Hancock on Audible as I fall asleep, <laughs> like I'm just playing to my own choir. Wake mm-hmm. up, so like, like it's all real, everything, Atlantis, the gods. Yeah, like, well, if, if that's all I'm going to listen to, if that's all that's going to be put into my mind, I hear you. that's all that's I real, you, bro. I hear you. So, you have to go and listen to Jason Colavito, you have to listen to people, you have to listen to the ones who are smart enough to put a book together that's, that's readable. And that's do, we have, do we have to listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson? I, no. <laughs> <laughs> was, no, I, no. I, I, yeah, well, I don't know, maybe, but I. <laughs> I, I, I got no idea about that guy. He's 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 out of my sphere. He's just he's not even kind of like wanting to get into the nitty gritty. At least Jason Colavito is going. I'm going to research loads least, about. Yeah, he's getting his hands dirty. Whereas the other guys like I'm not going to do it because it's all bullshit. Yeah, like there's yeah. no magic in the world. It's there's no nothing. It's just space and blah blah blah. <laughs> even though that's magical, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but you know, you know what I'm saying. So you have to, you have to like. I don't know, man. I remember a couple of years ago when I first started getting into all this, I remember um, getting annoyed with people who were like that. And now I'm not. Now I'm like, you know what? I can't be because I can't be biased because I don't know the answers. And I don't know that every book I pick up is true. So I need to, you've got to be that. True that. <laughs> well, yeah, you know no, it's, it's definitely like, I mean, I've told you guys this and it's not a big secret. Like when, Early on, I got into some Jim Mars stuff, right? But Jim Mars was so good at um, sourcing all of his stuff and referencing all of his sources. Like the back of his, like his book would be like this, and and the references would be almost the same thickness, right? If you dig into one of those books, Amazing. so like I would spin myself off to be like, okay, what? No, no way, this is real, right? Psh, find this reference. Okay, I'm gonna read that entire book, and I'm like, ah, and then reference yeah. whatever was in that book, and go, ah, all right, I'm gonna go over there and look at that, you know, and then just kind of keep going and going. 
Yeah. Okay. Probably this is like eight, you know, 80, 80% probably true. Like, because, yeah. you know, and then you look at the, around that way. So like I, I did my due diligence in that and not just believe in it at face value, because some of this stuff you could definitely, like you saying, you can definitely go, you can lean totally to the way that you feel or believe in any of it. And you can pick out one or two pieces that go, yeah, that fits my mold. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. That's going to work for what I believe. But the other stuff you just throw out and science has been doing that shit for so long. that I think now we're finally, it's getting to the point where it's like, well, maybe we should look at the stuff that we don't understand. Maybe we should put that into the equation and at least look at it because we don't know what the fuck it is. Uh, well, yeah. Like, do you know what's funny, right? You know, like the, the serious stuff, like, uh, when we talked to Ryan and um, Nick, uh, yeah. Nick, yeah, like uh, I spoke to Warner, like maybe a couple of days later. Oh yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I was watching our interview. He goes, "You know, I don't understand why you guys are always so bothered about the lady." He was like, "You know, ISIS, it's ISIS or Ishtar. She was an alien from Sirius. She came down. She's one of the animals. Now if you get over it, yeah. And now she's <laughs> on the statue. Now she's on the Statue of Liberty, and she's Britannic, and she's just like." So yeah, she's like, that's, she's basically the goddess. So this is old it. news, guys. Well, yeah, get over old it. Old news, yeah, you, you hung up on this. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> We're just like, get over it, asshole. <laughs> <This is what laughs> yeah. it. Like, I'm, just, I'm just trying to just get my head around the fact that, like, you know, like uh, all these statues that, for, you know, we've, I don't know if we talked about it before, but Britannica in this country on the coin is essentially ISIS and Statue of Liberty and uh, is it Columbia? Is that yours? The goddess Columbia. Uh, I don't know, but I so like I do the thing for the Shriners, right? So I do I drive parades, I drive my car in the parades for the Shriners, and all the money goes for Shrine Hospital for kids. And I was in a town called. Uh, hold on a minute, it'll come to me in a second. It's a small town, Napoleon. Believe it or not, oh, the town's yeah. called Napoleon. Yeah. Like, why would the heck name that? anyway? It's a it's a town on the river, pretty far from here. It's I don't know about thirty minutes, but they're. Um, it was a big parade and you know we drive in the parade the deal is is like i drive my car it's a 48 jeepster and i drive it and they give us money and we take that money and we give it to shrine hospital for children so it's a 48 jeepster it's a rare car they only made it from 48 to 50 and there's only 14,000 of them ever made so all of us each own our own car and we keep it up and stuff like that and you know we drive in parades and you know we have crazy horns and you know it's cool because the kids get to see us but anyway so I'm, I'm sitting in this thing and i look up and the top of the town square, like the middle, like it's this giant building, right? And on the top of this building, they're restoring. It's a goddess. It's a, it's a lady. It's a white lady, full on, mm -hmm. full size, like human size woman, white, you know, blue gown, like the whole thing's holding a couple different things. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, holy shit. You know, they got scaffolding around it, but it's like the center of town. And it's, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 feet tall. This woman is on top of this building. And I'm like, huh, yeah. there she is. She's always there. Well, she appears she appears everywhere like every culture like she's she appears you know and especially in our western cultures like she's she's there man like hiding in the background like not even hiding a lot of the time i mean no she's right there like plain view yeah like on her money like just all that shit it's crazy. <laughs> makes you it makes you crazy. wonder what 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 the purpose of it is right like why well, I think it, it's one of those things that the symbol subconsciously affects you in some way where you're like oh yeah I think it's, um, I, I mean, honestly, like, you know, the idea that well, when we were talking ages ago, but with the Carl Jung stuff, like he had a patient who presented uh, with visions of a solar goddess, yeah? mm. um, who they basically was like, it's uh, Ishtar, Isis, or Hathor, whatever, which way you want to take it. Yeah? Right, right. So, so um that was back in the thirties or something. So he created that and said, there's something in the psyche. We became really interested in that. Um, that showing us the lady, the woman. Um, so that was even back in young, but then as time's gone by, like, I mean, obviously like the ancient religions, when you, when you track them all back, they usually go back to the solar goddesses mm -hmm. and the solar gods. Mm -hmm. And they usually end up like as far back when you go really far back to like, well, not really, really far back, but far back to sort of like the Philistines. They're worshipping bull goddess, Baal, Molech, all that. Um, and then the female side of that, Astarte, to, which turns into Ishtar, turns mm -hmm. into Isis, Hathor, onwards and onwards. It's like Mithra, the ancient religion. Mithraism and all of that stuff, right? Same. Well, I mean, so, and even with like Jesus, right, the Son of God, and then there's the whole kind of background to that where it might literally be the 
sun and it's been mistranslated mm -hmm. or misconstrued over the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, all that, all that hidden stuff, like we were talking a while, a while back on chat um, and we, it was about, because uh, Mary Magdalene, obviously with John stuff like the Freemasonry is actually a big deal and all that. And um, the thing with Mary Magdalene was that obviously, you know, in the Bible, she's portrayed as a prostitute who was sort of blessed and had seven demons removed from her by Christ. Yeah? But well, actually, when you look into a lot of other translations of what she was, she was apparently the last high priestess of Hathor. And Jesus, in the book, like a lot of people, like a lot of other books, believe that he didn't cast seven demons out of her and take her away. He took her away and married her. And the seven demons were the seven rays of light that you see on things like the Statue of Liberty which mm -hmm. relates to the seven rays, which takes you all the way through to uh, theosophy and all that stuff. Yeah? So, so, so crazy how stuff tumbles down through history and becomes <laughs> like more, well, less and less what it was, you know, it, it kind of like it starts off with maybe a real event and then it turns into like these metaphors and well, like symbology. Christianity, like, well, sex, crazy. prostitution, like, you know, the temples are like the half of priestesses and you know, I know prior to that, it was all sexual, like, there's a massive element of sex involved. Um, and obviously, when Christianity came along, it stamped that shit out. Yeah, the sex element well, that, that, I get, you know, that kind of goes back potentially to what we were saying before about mushrooms, like, because it was the mushroom cults that mainly had this kind of orgiastic view of how to. Uh, integrate as a community so uh you know so much of the of the kind of paganistic ritual and or like orgies and sex like ritualistic magic using that type of method so much of it was fueled by psilocybin like throughout time they've got all this evidence of you know pots with mushroom heads on and like different things that we knew they used in these ceremonies so it makes you think that you know perhaps at, so at some point the the mushroom cults transformed into something else. And then you had like the Christian ethos of stamping out the paganistic, you know, like nature worshipers. And, and it's, it's, it's a strange turn in history, man. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, there's a huge connection to all of that. Right. Massive. Because there's that whole um, thought that at climax or before climax, that you are connected your subconscious to your conscious and to the, ultra conscious or whatever you know what i mean like the the everything right so at, at that point like a triad so yeah right so there's like that whole like at that so then there is like these different um uh, buddhist and i think it's indian as well that where they what they do is they try to um get themselves to climax but then not and keep themselves mm -hmm. at that point like just don't just don't right you just get to the point where you have climax and you stop and then what that does it gives you the a longer connection and you like you have that connection and you can control the connection then at that point and yeah. it well, sounds this is, this is like the kama well, sutra and stuff like that right well and this is yeah, fucked up and sure. maybe we should cut this part out but i'll just go <laughs> wait wait so i'll do my hands up so we can know what to cut but what some of the shit that i read from the epstein thing was that he was doing that thing where they would he would have these girls like massaging him to the point where he was just about to and he that he would stop and he would make a phone call or he would make a decision mm -hmm. or whatever whatever and that's what he was doing to some of these elites where he was like yeah. getting it's, them um, to the point right it's hard it harness an energy like i mean i mean like you know i'm not a freemason i'm not a fellow man none of those things like but from what i've read like you know the idea that not masturbating not climaxing not having sex relations to climax anyway like creates energy like literally fills you the idea is like almost like that brill idea yeah? like you become charged mm -hmm. well there's men and women i guess but it's, i'm talking about more from men from what i've read about so the idea of doing that and utilizing it as an energy as a force as part of some sort of uh, ritual energy gathering and then releasing <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, man. Well, that's, that, that's that's been like that's magic. been translated. That's been translated into a modern uh, kind of like way of looking at it. This is a, a strange conversation. <laughs> right? I'm tuning in, anyone tuning in, like this is a we've taken a turn here, but we might as well carry All on. Um, you know, one, one <laughs> you of thought the, we were going to talk about UFOs and shit. But, yes, no, we're, talking, we're, talking about it. we're just talking about Jack. It. Um, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Seriously, you've got the whole um, nofap 
like you've heard of mm-hmm. nofap like mm-hmm. you know like yeah. the, the, they've, they've even got an app for it and you know there's this, this whole kind of like you'll have to explain that for the yeah american yeah. people i know what it yeah. is but yeah well I mean. like nofap is like, a, like there's like an app yeah that i've heard of not that i've ever used it myself, <laughs> of course. Uh, but no no there's like a, there's like an app where you're meant to kind of like you know prevent yourself from masturbating and it kind of tallies up how many days and there's like a whole movement of people behind it like you know yeah it gives oh, yeah. you energy yeah, yeah. it gives you more energy gives you more drive and that's how they kind of advertise it and so you know you've you've kind of got a continuation of that now through the next generation like this modernist it's not not like catholicism saying don't jack off you know it's <laughs> not that anymore it's like people going hey look download this app see how many times you can not do it and see how you feel afterwards and like you know that's that's full oh, circle because you go to that whole like seinfeld episode you guys remember that, right. that classic seinfeld episode where it was like the chick is like naked and they're like you know everybody's betting like how much before you know you can bet <laughs> and kramer comes in he's like i'm out <laughs> <laughs> he throws his money on his table he's like i'm done <laughs> <He walks out>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a real thing like it, I mean, you, yeah. you guys know more than me that like you know in terms of in terms of ritual <sighs> magic and the occult and you know the use of oh, sex mate. the use of sex i don't, I don't know I, I you know i just read this stuff i mean like yeah, i've, I've read, read books about sex magic i'm not gonna magic. lie there's there's like something to it but uh, unless both people are part of it i mean like that whole thing with crowley was like him having sex with men <laughs> like because he was gay i don't know he was bi or whatever uh, what he was doing but like he was he's passing that whole thing off as like ritual magic right and maybe there was something to it <laughs> i don't know to get laid <laughs> yeah like, to say, get like laid. My, my brother my brother robbie went <laughs> into the time? whole thing about where he's like this guy he took this guy in the middle of the desert and he's just like this is a ritual drew a circle and he's just <laughs> getting this guy and this guy like never was the same again like he disappeared oh, shit. yeah like it just destroyed this man's life and like supposedly oh God. demons were uh, i don't know idea. But oh, to man, me, like, i'm sure demons were flying out everywhere well robbie was like this guy just wanted to have gay sex and make it so cool <laughs> i was like well maybe he did i don't know what's going on he built an entire religion just to get laid yeah I mean, that, kind of, that kind of tells you the the sexual energy the power of it, of it anyway you know regardless well, he, of, regardless of whether or not that was real the fact that he created an entire religion just to have sex <laughs> kind of shows you there's power to that stuff right <laughs> like, you know absolutely well yeah. it's like it's always oh, you look at it sort of like what, what span spanned from it and then the lifestyles that came from that so like you know go over to america and the jack parcel stuff just all your time it is mansion it is a lodge or whatever and yeah parties and drugs and just getting wild and a lot i think that's part of the reason that they reckon hubbard went in as part of the uh, Office of Nash- Naval Intelligence. Mm-hmm. Naval Intelligence. Keep an eye oh, on that. I, uh, speaking of Naval I Intelligence, I got to talk to you guys about something. Let's. I want to change the subject a little bit just for a second because I'm sure everybody's like turned it off now. Going, these guys are just talking <laughs> like, about sex and jacking <laughs> off, and everybody switched to you porn now, and they're watching something else, <laughs> and they're not listening to us. <laughs> so, but there's like <laughs> everybody's getting excited. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Let me bring cut it back. This. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it, just cut it off. Just turn it off. Turn it back. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's this guy that reached out to me, and I had I've done an interview, and I'm going to do another interview. And this guy reached out to me. He wants to be completely anonymous. I'm going through like severe levels of trying to keep this guy not known, like to the point where we did an entire hour interview. I thought it was recorded. It didn't record because of I was just on a VPN. I'm using Signal. I'm like doing a bunch of stuff, right? Like a lot of different stuff to try to hide him and me and people. And he's like in a foreign country where he's doesn't want anybody to know where he's at because he said he told me he still has some people that he loves and he doesn't, you know, but he's end of life. He doesn't have long to live. Um, and he just went and he told me all this stuff in naval intelligence and he, he just spun the story and i'm like all right i don't know if this is true or not and i don't know if i'm going to talk to this guy because he's on such medications and stuff that he might not make it the next time i talk him talk to him right so i literally recorded this whole this whole interview with no audio like it just it's just this guy and me and like because of everything the way it worked out it just didn't work so but he was telling me that there's like two sides to the whole coin that everybody keeps asking why is the air force not in this thing why why is the air force why is the navy pushing all this and his and, uh, and let me back it up a little bit this guy worked for many years inside the whole black world he worked for the you know special access programs that 
you know, subcontract to the government for a lot of different things. Energy, um, really, really smart guy. I mean, when you talk, I've talked to this guy and I know that he's just not reading things online and, and making this stuff up because he's, he's spun me into different directions. And what he was telling me was there's like two different fact, factions. And the reason, because of naval intelligence, this is why we're talking about this, was that the Navy um, is aligned with a certain branch of the intelligence world. And the Air Force is aligned with another branch of the intelligence world. And at the same time, they're both doing this. So the, from what he's telling me is that the Navy and this other branch of the intelligence world wants this stuff to come out. The Air Force and the other branch don't at all because <laughs> this is where it gets weird, is that each one of these factions, one of them he calls Aquarius and the other one he calls um, something 10. I'll look it up in a minute. It's like some, something 10. But anyways, these two different things are at war with each other kind of philosophically, metaphorically, and actual and in actuality kind of are that this group has aligned themselves with a off-world entity and this other group has as well this group doesn't want us to reveal the other and this one wants the betterment of humanity and basically it's good versus evil dark versus light all that bullshit so um, um that like kind of the uh when you talk about what three letter agencies aren't you on both sides yeah yeah there's, so, there's, so each of these three letter agencies representing the Navy and the Air Force, and each one has got their own extraterrestrial homeboys. Yep. And well, they, and, and, they, and they, one of them, they made a deal. This is where it gets fucking weird. One of them made a deal that in exchange for technology, not only just technology, like, oh, here's this, but hey, here's a scientist guy to tell you how this works, and we'll tell you how to make it, and here's the manual, and this is what it does. <laughs> And in exchange for that, they can take anybody anytime they want. Well, that's funny because that's exactly what Holden said. And what's interesting as well is that Holden was involved in the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, which is the intelligence branch of the United States Air Force, which is now the in, in, in a position of key oversight over the, uh, the UAPTF. So NASIC, the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, which is the intel branch of USAF, is now in a position of oversight over the intelligence data gathered by the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force. So this has kind of gone from ONI's thing, the Navy's thing, and the Air Force has now come in and said, hey, we're going to be a very big part of you managing this. And you've got to look at the, the historical context of the Air Force with this whole situation. I mean, everyone in the UFO community knows Roswell and, mm -hmm. you know, going on from there. So, you know, even taking aside the whole idea of two different aligned alien races, because I, I don't know if that's true, but like what, what we do know is that the USAF has a historical involvement in this, keeping it a secret, Blue Book, all of that stuff. And now they are, via their intelligence branch, NASIC, in a key position of oversight over what we get to see, over what politicians get to see. And so, I mean, you know, I put a, I put a little vote up on twitter about whether people see this as a good thing a bad thing and you know it was pretty overwhelmingly obvious that people felt this was a very negative thing to happen uh, i spoke to ross coltart about it recently and he was like you know i really don't think this is a good thing it seems like usaf has suddenly rushed in to manage the narrative mm -hmm. but you know interestingly enough um you know holden who uh you know said he had a a, a nasic background and and went on in, into other places uh, <clears throat> said the same thing about a technological exchange that permitted for the abduction of citizens. You know, basically, we we get this technology, and uh, I don't know if this guy said anything to you, but what Holden said to me was that it was primarily, or at least a, a very important element of this, was around time travel technology. Uh, you know, different types of like temporal technologies, and yeah, in exchange for this supposedly they got access to whoever they wanted to take for whatever purposes but then the 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 extra bit in the narrative that i've been given you know whether or not it's true i don't know um that this agreement was then broken by these beings and so any kind of like any any interactions after that agreement are now considered a breach of the agreement because the agreement's apparently null and void because of something that happened in the past. So, like, whether you believe it or not, if we're going to go down that narrative, then, yeah, there's apparently a species that we did a deal with, then they messed up that deal, so we no longer trust them, and who knows what's going on there. But in terms of, like, real-world stuff that we know is happening, 
the U the United States Air Force has just come in and taken basically a huge chunk of oversight out of the uh, disclosure narrative that we're seeing unfold. So that doesn't fill me with high hopes. No, the, and the scary. I mean, and yeah, this is all speculative, right? And it's one guy, or now it's two guys, maybe. Right, or whatever. right. Maybe right. it's the same guy. Who knows? Maybe but it's the same fucking guy. Hold it. <laughs> are you are you messing around here? <laughs> but but this guy was telling me he's like, well, it's not only like the the abductions, like right, or you know that we know as abductions. He's like, these people don't come back. He's like David Politis, the guy from Missing Four Hundred One, is is legit. Like these people don't come back, and he's like, they're slaves on off world mining expeditions and whatever and i'm like if they're a billion years more, more advanced than us why the hell do you need people why like do us? they need human body flesh slaves it's like, like somebody's got to mop the floor them. somebody's got to dig the thing and i'm nah, like There's i don't no buy that fucking way. i don't buy that me either uh, but i mean he's like well the same thing that happened to us i mean like we had slavery up until the 1800s for god's sakes and he's like well it's part of their economy and i'm like what kind of economy do they have like like, <laughs> like you know what i mean like it's, it's just but anyway he, i mean he's going on to that it's like but if all these people are really getting taken i mean speculative completely but if these people are just disappearing men women children everywhere from all over the planet and they're taken off to some fucking asteroid and they're going to mine it for the rest of their lives until they die out there what the fuck are we going to do about it what about if it's more like trans translate that to something more like like the archon thing to so say like instead of um instead of us being taken it's like you're killed in battle and instead of you transcending it's like a hack they then take your energy they take that and they feed upon that to make their crazy missions possible because that's the gnostic thing isn't it that's mm. like kind of getting into that side of things so the idea that you could actually utilize as energy for some other entities <laughs> well they can eat us good. the same way we well, eat yeah. cows and shit too right the same thing right they get energy we get energy if we eat a hamburger or, or a chicken we do right so yeah do. but maybe maybe that's just because we're like basic ass mammals right now so we need like that i mean you, you know you kind of look at look at even how we're going now people eating little soya cubes or powders and it's kind of like we're deteriorating in in our in our need for uh material stuff as we're going and i may you know i just kind of think that perhaps at a certain level of, of advancement you don't need to kind of focus on munching up a human <laughs> you know to get you to get your that, daily bread like it's just yeah, seems kind, of kind of like you, i don't know I, I mean a lot of these a lot of these beings that are supposedly seen don't seem to have uh you know like um like sometimes they don't have mouths and stuff and uh, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know man like it's all just speculation but well i mean arming us i don't really get i don't really no, buy them. i don't, I don't get know, that either have you guys seen uh, the new war of the world show no, I, you know, no, you told me to, I downloaded cool. it, so I'm yeah, going to watch it. Yeah. yeah, It's sick. I mean, like, yeah. I watched the first season last year, and it was good, yeah? But that was kind of like, you know, actually, I shouldn't really talk about it, because people get pissed off, because I'll tell them stuff, why don't I? Oh, spoiler yeah. alert, if you want to watch the if you want to watch the World of yeah. the Worlds thing, just... Let me say this, yeah, yeah, spoiler is. alert. I'm really sorry, spoiler alert, okay? Um, do, you, do you guys mind? No, dude, tell me, because I'll still watch it yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah, go for it. Okay, all right, so season one... Um, like the original one of the worlds, so like things hit, like mm -hmm. meteors, or whatever. Yeah, um, everyone's a bit scared. Out of the meteors comes whatever you think of the aliens. But in this version, the aliens are like those dog robot dogs that you see on videos. Those scary. Oh, dogs. from Boston Dynamics, like the Boston little. Dynamics, the, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and yeah, and yeah. basically, all they do is just they just run around London. The whole thing's set in Europe. Oh, of course, of course, Europe. it's London. Yeah, you guys right. get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and then a bit that in, happened in, in Texas in or something. They'd be like, "What the hell's that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. That's it. I mean, that's, it did now. That's, that's why they didn't film me in Texas. It wasn't a story. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> 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 that, was, that, was a, that was a quick <laughs> alien invasion. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, uh, so these so these Boston Dynamics style dog things start come down and kill everyone. Yeah. Oh, like, they start killing people. Like, well, there's the original wave, which is sonic, of course, or mm. acoustical, harmonics, mm. kills everybody. Anybody that's been shouted to the sound is then hunted down by these Boston Dynamics robot dogs with a shot to the brain, yeah? Mm. Anyway, so then what they try and figure out, it's like, what the fuck are these things and where, what's going on? Meanwhile, of course, you've got the obligatory human survivor who's starting to get psychic links to the aliens, yeah? Mm. Like they, these Boston Dynamics dogs don't want to kill these certain types. And then what you find out, season two, 
Shit, I'm really spoiling this guy. Like, people are going <laughs> to like, love it or hate it at this point. They're like, ah, oh, fuck. But you well, know what? We gave him fair warning. Forget it. You know, so these, these aliens, so basically the, the finale of season one is them uh, going into a massive underwater spaceship in the Thames in London, of course, which mm-hmm. rises out of the water. <laughs> um, and inside it, when one of these girls who whatever has this mysterious psychic link goes to find out what's in there, there's a human. Of course. And humans, Ooh. if you go into season two, they're not just humans like a bit different to us. They're exactly the fucking same, yeah? But, um, it's just Marco Rubio. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, just Marco Rubio. <laughs> oh, just hiding, hiding behind the wheel. <laughs> just, just, Don't look behind yeah. the curtain. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> fucking Marco but, Rubio. <laughs> Uh, but, but, but so, so these humans, right? What they then do is they then start a ground battle between humans versus humans. So you've got these humans that come from with like guns, wherever. like like actual guns, like like or with guns, normal yeah. guns. <laughs> so when so when they um so when they actually like do stuff like the whole idea of the sharing of tech, yeah, like mm-hmm. from a guy who's a human from another world. I don't know why not yet because I haven't seen the rest of the show. Uh, but um, giving a notebook of, of physics uh-huh. to, a, to, a, to a quantum physicist in Paris or whatever and saying, this is the future, you'll come to this year. Mm-hmm. And then going into like, so basically it's a human from billions of years or millions of years more advanced than us giving information to a human on how they can achieve instant space flight and how can wow. all this crazy stuff. So this whole idea of like the alien being nothing like us and they're getting getting to time travel because I'm thinking that's where it's going to go. It's going to go to time travel. They're right under our noses. Yeah, War of the Worlds. The must be an alien, like you know, no, you, they're fucking humans. You're onto the so the idea, yeah, this whole, whole idea of the humanoid aliens. Well, you know, where do we where do we come from? Why do we, what are we? That whole idea that we might just be part of that anyway. Yeah, yes. we're all there fucking aliens. There you go. We're all fucking aliens. John Warner was like, "There's, there's fucking humans everywhere." Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't want to use use the new world of the world's TV show as my evidence of this. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, based, based <laughs> listen, off of this, based off of this, this fictional TV. series that we know <laughs> that I figured it out. Yeah? It's very well made and believable. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds, uh, <laughs> Sounds like an, a, a lot more of an expansive narrative than the Tom Cruise film, oh, which I loved as a kid. That was, that was a, a kid. I movie. watched that so much as a kid. Yeah. yeah. No, that was a great movie. Well, this, is, this goes back, because what, what got me interested, right, after watching a bit of that was I started to think about some of the shows that I used to like when I was a kid growing up. And the, the, the BBC over here uh, used to put out a show called Chucky's Children and another one called The Serious Something Over. A serious mystery, or I can't remember. And it was like six part kids shows made for teenagers about humans from Sirius <laughs> and psychic abilities, all this stuff. All around that, that really happened? Yeah. That, that was the thing? Wow. Um, so at, at the same time that you probably got all like the Yuri Geller linking up to, again, that all links back to Sirius. Like the Andre Courage stuff and uh, the Nine, and that then influencing on into as far as all the stuff that people are looking at now with TTSA and the people involved Jeez. in that. Well, it's no surprise why you ended up being the person you are <laughs> watching that stuff as a child. You know maybe. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. <That's> well, it. <laughs> or it's just like my my old man. I keep going back to my old man. Like he's eighty one now. Shit, he's gonna be. I don't know. Yeah, but he's like, yeah, they're just slowly trickling the shit out to everybody. Like just like through movies and TV, it's just like they just put a little bit out there. That's true. This yeah. guy that I was talking to, this this dude I was telling you about, was telling me that um, Gene Roddenberry was part of this club that knew all the shit, that all the Star Trek shit that came out and all yeah, this other yeah, stuff. Yeah. And he was telling me that you know, um, oh man, he was telling me all kinds of crazy shit, you know. But like, I have no way to validate any of it, you know. I mean, I've heard different parts so of this problem. problem. Yeah, it's always the problem. It's like, well, what always do you believe? You know, like what? Well, and why do you want to tell fucking believe? me? I get like a thousand people that are that follow yeah, me on my yeah. nobody. Like, what am I gonna do besides you know? Like, he just well, wants to tell everybody before he dies, you know, and he wants to tell everybody how fucked up it is and how. And sadly, without pulling out a, a fucking laser gun or a gray, 
come and sit on his knee and tell the story with him. It's just another guy with no evidence. Exactly. Get- well, this is this is what's kind of interesting and it def- definitely a point of contention. And you know, I don't know where I sit. But this is what's kind of interesting about this Anjali character, this 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 lady that recently did that press conference. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was it, it, it's definitely put a divide division between people in the community because some people are just like, this is crazy, like you know, she's batshit insane, and other people are like she's totally legit. So I'm just in the middle, like looking at this and, and wondering. But I think what's kind of interesting about this is that she's actually said she's going to do this expedition. Like, you know, like the, if she follows through on it, like, wow. That, that, I mean, you know, that could be potentially the, the biggest thing to ever happen ever. Uh, you know, if she actually manages to get this evidence, but it's, it's her confidence that's baffling me. Like, you know, cause I, I, I don't know what, I don't know where I'm sitting on this right now, but the fact that she's actually willingly trying to get people together and, uh, and do this kind of expedition, it's like, is she Dude, really for real? Is this for real? And she sat there and she listed off her credentials. She listed off her her governmental credentials, her background, and is she and, listed off know, her grade uh, school where she was fucking went to grade school yeah, and like dude. everything, like up to like so I everything, get it. Everything. But, okay, wait one second. You guys keep talking, but I gotta yeah. see a man about a horse. Oh yeah, no. You know, horse, what, that, you know what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what that means. We know what that means. I didn't know if that was a American thing or not. You're gonna go jack off, right? Yes. <laughs> started talking about underground caves and i got excited <laughs> well, i'm smoking the stones I'm, no I'm but sir, no, i'm sorry man i've been I, well I, yeah yeah but mm-hmm. like well what was going to say quickly before you start doing it well I'm not cutting and it's part of the whole that's where i get to the part where i'm thinking like the trickster thing is like right the thing that is part of it it's just fucking having fun like it's really just fucking with us um when nick hitton and i we can we can edit to this so when nick (laughs) we should have nick hitting on this fucking talk but when he showed up him and i are hanging out we did this a couple nights two like two different times two different like months apart probably but like the amount of weird shit and synchronicity that that happened between us with us and that all the shit that happened was like I don't know if he's bringing it to us or he's come you know he's coming in and we're just like cool let's let this happen and then both of us like would make shit happen but like the level uh, of synchronicities think, and the weird shit that happened was just off the fucking charts you know and i think it's, it's I, I reckon that he's so like um you know like when you sort of read about poltergeist activity and all that mm-hmm. it's around people like that's sort of like around young teenagers right. and people i'm not saying anything about me like that no, yeah, 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 yeah. real psychic energy like really like you know talking before about saving up energy right a varying type whether it's sleep or whether it's sexual or whatever it may be yeah like that's what he's like and i think that he kind of tracks it because he's like you know, that's what he's like he's buzzing in it's full of it like the electricity flying off him he literally got <laughs> out of the car he got lit out like He's like, I just got this car. And I'm like, cool, because I'm a car dude, you know, like hot rod and stuff. And he's like, I don't know. It feels like the transmission's slipping. And I'm like, all right, jump in, let's go. And like literally pulled in my driveway and I'm probably wearing literally this. So we just jump in and it's me and him just, you know, just flying through the gears. I'm like, ah, it's all good. Just This car, it's just that's just the way it shifts, you know? I'm like, okay, cool. So we pull back up into my driveway. We get out of the car and boom, I'm sliding the door and then black helicopter. <laughs> And Nick's like, yep. And he's like, I'm going to get my phone out. And he's like, zoom in on it. And he's like, yeah, I've been here 10 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? I've never seen that before or since. <laughs> it's like, And that's just one. That was literally like the first 10 minutes he was here. And then uh, I think he's putting some of it in the book, his new book that he's writing. But like, there's just so much other stuff. And it's like, but it burns him out, man. Like, so yeah. the amount, like you think about it, it's literally like a candle burning at both ends. And like, it's just like, um and but like what he was getting at is that it's it's the trickster thing it's just trying to fuck with us and have fun well, and thing. we take I it too serious I, we I take it too fucking forget. serious yeah 100 percent. like i don't e- I, I don't even think that's kind of like malevolent or evil or like ah it's like it's just playing with us because i i who knows maybe it's trying to just teach us the simple fact that life is a joke <laughs> like, or, or know, just like, have exactly. fun, fun. Just don't it's have fun. yeah like, like, totally. totally freaking out about it <laughs> but then but then you know you got to wonder like okay well is that a different thing to what is penetrating u.s nuclear facilities because that's like you know that's not having fun that's prodding the bear that's no that's it's not it's having fun for them like, they're like hey fuck you what are you gonna do <laughs> i know but like you know you can't catch me you can't catch me to be fair 
absolutely. I mean, like you know, to be fair, the the, the whole Tic Tac situation and the the arriving the arriving at their cat point that is kind of like a big. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's just like oh, you've got you've got F eighteen Super Hornets. That's cute. That's cute. Uh, hey, oh, you can finally see us now. On that. Yeah, here's a quick question. Like, I don't like know. Well, I used to know loads about the specifics of the Tic Tac and stuff, but like, you know, when that happened, um, you know the cat point thing. Yeah, yeah. I read something the other day that it was the same cat point that they'd used previously, anyway. Like in the exercises the days prior. Really? Huh? I don't. I don't know about that. I don't. I've well, never heard. I, that I'm not saying anything because I'm going to get armies of people getting on my case. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The you cat know, point is encrypted every 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's it yeah. He doesn't know everything about the motherfucking brief you are for. The really cat like point is encrypted by 14 satellites and a two-tailed other party. Now there's no way anybody in there can know it. <laughs> don't know anything about it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the fucking guy's got a beard. That's it. So British idiot. <laughs> He's probably Ministry of Defence. <laughs> so I am. I am okay, one. one. Mi one. <laughs> we should start the Mi one. Mi one. Mi one. Please. Yeah. Mi minus two. <laughs> <laughs> minus two. <laughs> Uh, fuck we don't know anything i think that's great i, I think that's yeah. the fun part I, I really think it's just like fuck it we should have fun because this is fun i love hanging out with you guys and talking about this shit because it's fun like and this dude that was telling me this shit for like an hour made me feel fucking terrible i'm like yeah well, there's a bunch of aliens that that just can take us and steal us and there's nothing we can do about it the other shit he was telling me about that was that he's like we've got the capability since 79 Okay, the 79. So that's like the year I was fucking born. Do the math. Okay, so for 42 years, we've had the capability to, we have the same craft, we've done all this stuff. And he's like, there's people that are cocky enough that think that we can take them on. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, there's people that are cocky enough to think that we can just go after them. And he's like, that'd be a massive mistake. They're a billion years more advanced. We'd just be gone. And he's like, but there's people that have literally tried since then to be like, let's go, let's go after them. And people have like severely stopped them because we're like, yeah, let's do it. We can, uh, we can take them on. Let's, let's go after them. And I'm like, that's fucking terrible. And he's like, yeah, no, that's what's really happening is that we have the capabilities. We've, he told me that, um, <laughs> which is what I've done a lot of research recently that uh, Maxwell's equations were translated incorrectly or not incorrectly, but he, tr they translated them to do math easier linearly via, because everything was done by slide rule and, and pencil and paper. But now that we have computers that can do shit real easy, that this whole other end of physics exists. There's this whole other black world. There's a college that they actually send people to the other side of Colorado that and when you're in the military, you go there and you learn like the real physics of how everything works. And all this shit exists in our physics that's not taught in academia, but it's taught in the black world. And this shit happens. And we've had 15 different types of anti-gravity that have existed since 79. Same shit that John Warner says. That's where I like all this stuff is going. Fuck, man, it's starting to make a lot of sense. But yeah. But what he's telling me is that, yeah, there's this whole other side that nobody knows about. Everything's a wave, frequency, all this other shit. But I'm like, fuck, why would, like, if we have that, and then it goes into DeLong's books, right? So DeLong's books is like, we have all these tier three Bs, we have the locust, we have all this other shit. When the locust just came out, somebody posted that shit that we have with some type of, some came for some kind of military manual about the locust. And, but anyway, like, if we have this shit and we're cocky enough, because we're Americans, we're like, yeah, let's go get them. Yeah, let's go after them. Like, Somebody's got to be like, wait yeah, a minute, well, pump the fucking brakes. Well, you kind of hope that, you know, if you went after him and, and it was that much of a pathetic show of hubris that <laughs> the aliens wouldn't just be like, right, we'll just destroy the planet Earth. Yeah, <laughs> we're sure the actions like, of America. Mm. Or yeah, it's like, you surely know what I mean? Whatever, whatever this is would know. Surely whatever this is would know any sort of like, you know, strategic plans that we have in place. Oh, yeah, I, I, I would that point. Yeah, <laughs> they know where the cat point is. They know where the cat point is. <laughs> they know where the cat point is. It's all a game over from here. Like you know, but yeah, but seriously, I mean, I, I, I kind of like, I just don't, I don't think that we could do that. I don't think we could do that. And I, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I'm just like a painful optimist, but I just don't think it's that whole thing of like, oh, you, you want to fuck with us now, humans? We'll blow up the planet. Like, I just don't think I we're dealing think so with either. that. I well, really don't. Like. Well, that's what I asked him. I was like, okay, well, he was telling me like there's two different factions, right? So the one of them is giving us tag. The other one is like more about the spiritual 
So the Navy side is like the spiritual. We want to bring you guys back up. We want to get all of us to the, because if you guys get up on the higher plane, everybody else gets on a higher plane and it's just helpful to us. If you do the same thing. Okay. That kind of makes sense. Cool. And I'm like, so are they going to help us against these other assholes? And I'm like, no, I'm like, well, why not? Because if these ass is like, because, um, I can't remember the name of the, what's the Star Trek thing. That's where the Star Trek thing tied into where it's like the, no. where it's like, you, you know, um, you, you can't yeah, interfere. You can't, you can't intervene. Oh, you can't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there's probably people screaming at the screen. Right <laughs> now. I mean, intervention. Uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah not intervention, but it's it's like yeah, a, it's a it's a code of yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. but you I'm, know, I'm, I'm looking it up. Looking okay, but you know what I mean. It's galactic bullshit. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you can't interfere with anybody's shit, right? Like it, everything is like, okay, we know these guys are assholes. Like you know, you guys are probably shitty too, and whatever else, but we can't interfere in any of your. The prime directive. That's it. The prime directive. Oh, yeah. The prime nice. directive. Very nice. So we can't fuck well, with you because of whatever. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> serious? Once, once again in this conversation, we're basing things off of a TV show. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but most As of it you says in Star Trek. Based off, like, honestly, like, you know, like, this, is, this is the thing that's been pretty, like, for a, little, a little bit depressing, actually, man. The more I've read, and the more deeper I've gone, and the more I've actually read around the surfaces, it's like, Oh man, it's been quite sad actually because I think that a huge chunk of it, a huge chunk of it is a conspiracy. And I think a huge, like the way that the whole culture of all of this has gone has actually got a start point to take yeah. us to now almost yeah. as a linear. And it feeds into Western neurology and into some of the Russian stuff I've been looking at here. Um, and it all goes back to like 1800s, the Blavatsky stuff, and the rebirth of the idea of what pagan thought, solar gods, all that stuff. Because um, honestly, man, like, if, if I could be bothered to write it down, <laughs> and a few other people have, what you can see is a clear pathway of people meeting in groups, and it all connects to uh, the Russian shaman stuff, Tibetan Buddhism, Nicholas Rorich, going into America, Senator Henry Wallace, um, Freemason creator of the symbol on the dollar bill, you know, the Illuminati stuff, uh, Freemason stuff, sorry. And uh, basically, from there, all of those links out go out to stuff like Andrea Purich, they go out to some of the players that came off Paperclip, and a large part of it is psychological, and a large part of it is spiritualist. Yeah, so people, a lot of these experiences, like for example, you know, a week before Roswell happened. You had Mead Lane, who's the ethership guy, who right. was also a fellow mine. You know, so one of Alistair Crowley's guys, a week before saying they'd been in contact with aliens and they wanted to come in, come to planet Earth. Yeah? And he was one of the guys who was at the Murak landing with Eisenhower, apparently. Same right. guy, yeah. Oh, actually, no, it was his mate, Gerald Light. They worked together. Like, um, so what you find is they're all connected and feeding into the same movements. And a lot of it comes straight out of the Theosophical Society's work. Mm -hmm. um, Blavatsky, going up into Tibet, the master, the idea of the secret masters, the Mahatma. Nicholas Rorich, pre-World War II, going into Tibet, becoming a full-blown Buddhist. Um, but doing that for America, who's a Russian, and what he was trying to do was bring the idea of a messiah that had been prophesied, the Maitreya, that was going to come out and he wanted to try and unite the world, yeah? Like, literally a new world order through peace, through Buddhism. And he was sponsored by the guy who could have possibly gone on to become president, this, this guy, Henry Wallace. He didn't, yeah? He, Henry Wallace was calling Rurich, a Russian Buddhist, calling him guru in his messages to him. And then, taking advice from Rurich, was then going and allocating money to Andrea Purich and his operation, who were channeling the Nine. All right? Yeah. So, so what you then find is that you've also got the connections of the guys like um, uh, Yuri Geller uh, being pulled out of Israel into this idea and put into this idea that there's the Nine, We've been working and channeling with these guys. What can you give us? He tries to channel it. Some people believe with the use of mushrooms um, and starts to come out with this 
supercomputer AI intelligence, which lives up in the sky, up in the stars, orbiting Earth. I can't remember what it's called. John, do you know? It's got like Spectre or something, yeah? I think, and, I, think, um, I think John might be off somewhere right now. But um, no way. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. There he yo. is. Yo. Um, Sorry. So yeah, all, you guys there? You guys there? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. All right. Good. Sorry about that. I had I got like kids rushing me. It's all good. I man. took the it's gates down, the good. baby gates down. So now I got kids just literally rushing me, <laughs> like bum rushing me, wanting cookies and snacks. And like I'm 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 a snack bitch for a four year old. Yeah. yeah I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a I'm sorry. I'm like I want I'm a snack. I'm like where are your moms? I'm sorry. What the fuck? <laughs> Back off. Unless you've got stuff to talk about with demons and aliens and God. <laughs> yeah. she, she'd probably tell us all something we should know about. Yeah, she would. Fine, you put something in the cupboard. <laughs> I, I swear to God, man, when that kid was two, when she laid down on the deck, I mean, that was one of the, the biggest experiences that brought the family together to realize that I wasn't crazy anyway, was that when she laid down, it was like, Daddy, look. And it was a white orb. Boom. And I was yeah. like, oh, shit. And then she had up, was like, yeah. Like something told her to lay down on a deck. Like she's never laid down on the deck before, right? And there's just like, lay down. It's like, never lay down. Why the hell would you lay down on the deck? She's a two year old, you know what I mean? Just, I mean, two year olds, whatever. But when she directly pointed exactly where that thing was in the sky, I was like, oh, shit. That's cool. That's cool. Actually, you know, that's a bit like when I had my, uh, when I first saw these orange orbs in this triangle formation. My, uh, one of my good friends who lives not that far away, just like a kind of 10 minute walk up the road was out in his back garden with his young daughter, who was like eight years old and he didn't see anything, but around the same time, cause I went cause I told him about what I'd seen and he was like, oh, well, you know, weirdly enough, I was outside with my daughter and she went, daddy, look, there's an orange triangle in the sky. Like she saw something like, you know, he, he turned around and didn't see it, but she was like, no, something flew by this little, this kind of orange triangle. And that was the night. It was the exact I same night and everything that you same saw. Same night, man. Like, you know, come on, what's going on there? You know, and Dude, he was like, we just, we just happened to be outside looking up at the sky. And I was like, what the fuck? Man? Dude, I think they're like re really way more connected than we are. I read yeah. this really crazy book. Yeah. It was called the secret history of the world great title right but um i'll figure out the author i'll put it up here but this guy goes into like life evolved in various different formats on the planet mushrooms all these other things plants right there's a whole plant kingdom where there's a plant god and all these other things right and that humans um eventually they didn't have the you know how we have the crown so when you have a you don't have a kid yet one day hopefully you will so, so you'll realize this but the crown of the baby's head so when they come out of the womb like there's this plate yeah. in the middle right that's that's loose right so they can flow and it doesn't really harden up until i don't know what the age is right but that whole middle piece yeah. is so you got to be careful right but his theor, um theory and well of, in this whole book is that that middle piece is what directs us. It's like a connection. It's like almost a physical, metaphysical, psychological connection to the one, to the everything that some ants, uh, insects, um, you know, bees, other things like that have more of that hive mentality where they're connected right. to everything and everything's connected to it. And then humans, as we evolved or got away from the one, sealed that part up on our brain like right. right so we had and then once that happens we lost our connection to the, you know everything right so I, I think that's kind of interesting so i think like when they're young when kids are young that that thing is looser yeah i think that, i mean we i mean you know from all of the past live testimonies and and you know the weird things that kids come out with like i, I love some of the uh, testimonies you have on on the internet from parents who have said like Yo, my kid said something crazy, you know, and they've said said something really weird about like, oh, I, I remember you in your old life, mum, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just just stuff where like for them, it's 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 sensible at the time, and I find it interesting that obviously most adults fade from memory that portion of their childhood. You know, you don't remember a whole lot from the age of you know, kind of one to eight years old. That, that shit, I don't that, remember what I did in high school. Period. People tell yeah, me, and I'm like, like yeah, <laughs> for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, some memories are worse than others. Yeah, but like, like no, but like, you know, but with I that think one I, documented story that's really good with that kid that was like, my name is Jimmy. I went down in a plane. And yeah. like, do you remember that one where he met yeah. his, he met those guys that were in his 
platoon or whatever, like the guy yeah, that man. flew, and he was yeah. like, he I, uh, remembers but, all these guys. He remembers Bill, and he meets him. This guy's like ninety, and this guy's like a three year old kid. And he's like, Bill, I went on the Pete thing. Do you guys remember that? It's like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like, there's dude, no I way mean, that, that kid that kid drew planes his whole life. As soon as he could drew a plane, right. he drew a plane like sinking into the ocean on fire. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like Leslie Leslie Kane was the one that kind of really invested yeah. in that of her book, and and um, yeah, I mean, like the Netflix anyone, documentary is uh, that series is well, yeah, great yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, her book her book's better, like you know, than the series. Mm -hmm. Oh, of like, course. I mean, the, the series is cool, and like, like, you know, there's some really and like that one's one of the key uh, mm -hmm. stories in that. But there's more right. detail in her book, and um, you know, uh, that's a crazy one. I mean, like it's kind of like you can't deny it. That one's one hundred percent a real case with like verifiable evidence because they had the historical data to back up who he was. Like he was making claims about the name of this person who he didn't know. And then they find out in the historical records. Yeah. This guy did go down <laughs> in the, uh, you know, it's, it's like that, that you, you know, like I invite any skeptic to honestly dissect every piece of data on that and tell me that's bullshit. Hey, it's Mick not, West yeah, challenge. Like, <laughs> for real like yeah if you can if you can do that i'd be impressed no seriously the, the, that that you know and there's so many cases like that i have a really vivid memory of um uh being in school and we were doing religious studies and it was my favorite teacher because this teacher was a buddhist and she was really cool and she like loved to show people s stuff about past lives and things wait like a minute that. let me stop for one <laughs> second because america yeah. and england are completely fucking because we were like the separation of church and state are fucking blah, blah, blah. so what the fuck are you doing in england and are you in public school and you're learning about religion yeah 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 dude i didn't go to private school jesus like you well, know i don't like, know yeah, i'm I, asking um, i don't know <laughs> john luke's no, yeah, no, we, um, we, we do, we no, do no, I, I went to a normal school man like, oh no i don't no, I don't, I, okay. No, so what yeah, they no, teach I, you about I, like I all it. the like, religions or like it's, it's a strong, it's a, it's a stronger thing in America for sure. Like the kind of Christian and like the the overlap between education. Like I, my primary school was uh, like we, it, it was like it was a, it wasn't a church school, but we had to go to church. So there's still like that element. But when we went into high school, like secondary school, um, yeah, it wasn't as it, we we learned about different cultures. Like at least through this. RE teacher like through this teacher so, like, like the she, church of england is that what it is yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah the church yeah, of england yeah. has like different schools underneath its influence right, right, i'm know. sorry i'm an yeah, idiot yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know anything about but it I just, I just want to learn no for Marcus. sure but like um yeah like we had this we had this teacher who was a buddhist and yeah she showed us like this documentary and it was in india and like i think that because in india so much of their religious culture believes in reincarnation it kind of makes me think that perhaps the the kind of like past life memory film is stronger in that culture because oh, yeah. they believe in it and they entertain it so you get all these children being born who believe they've had past lives and there was this one who was that like, the, is that the one with like the bullet wound or like no, the, like no, it was it's like they've been they've been hit by a bus or something they were they were like in their past life they uh, they were a young boy, but they lived in a family that like sold incense. Like they made incense, and they sold it in this big market. And he wouldn't he wouldn't shut up about it with his new parents. Like you know about oh my other family, they sold incense. <laughs> and he had this he had this birthmark on his on his chest, oh, like a, yeah. a really wide birthmark. And uh, eventually they they tracked down the parents. They went to the house. The kid described everything about his previous life he the, the child that had died had been hit the trauma point was exactly where the birthmark was on this kid and uh. he went into he went into his old room he, he went into his old room he lifted up a floorboard and found the stash of sweets that the kid used to put underneath his floorboard like like come on like yeah, wild, wild. <laughs> you know what i mean but, that's but, crazy like you say, it's like, you know, maybe they accept it more because, I mean, their whole structure, they have teams of people going out of, um, like, Nepal and stuff, trying to find the next llamas. The next Dalai Lama, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, I mean, there's stories of kids in Spain getting approached, you know, like Spanish kids, and not, not, not even like, you know, Tibetan Spanish kids or whatever. Like a Spanish kid, a there's thing. Tibetan Spanish kids that just blew my fucking mind. <laughs> well, you might, <laughs> well, you might have a Tibetan, Tibetan, Tibetan Spanish kid. I'm like, hey, don't they style Ah, ah. <laughs> 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 but it's, it's you know, like the idea that like they then would go to Spain and present this Spanish boy who's brought up by Spanish parents in a Spanish school and say, here's five sets of prayer beads. Here's five walking sticks. Here's five weathers. 
and then pick, the, pick the ones out. that are the right, the right ones. These are mine. These are mine. And then it's like we we want to take your child to Nepal or India, wherever it's going to be, or Tibet, and we're going to train them to become alarmists. Like, fuck. Oh, so some parents are just like, no way. So, <laughs> yeah, like get out of my house. Fuck off. But, but then there's kids <laughs> like you, you, you read about seven year old boys getting taken away, and they they become llamas, the reincarnation of llamas, and trained that way in wild, man. Like, so they believe that to such a level. And that culture does actually permeate our society too. The fact that parents are approached by llamas and Buddhist monks and ask, can we take the child away because it's special? Weird shit, man. Quite exciting. Man. Would you, what would you do if someone came to your house? house? Like, what would you honestly do, like, as parents, if someone came to your house and was like... <laughs> You're talking about America? Oh, you, know what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about? Hey, man, look at... You ain't taking yeah, shit. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm sure that wouldn't go down too well. I, can't, like, yeah, let's, uh, well, I got about 1,800 bullets that said you ain't going to take nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that, that's just the American attitude. But no, literally, it's like, well, I don't know. Like, well, this, uh, is, this is the thing, isn't it? Because like, you know, in the way the culture is now, like... The idea of a spiritual revolution happening, like, is pretty far fetched because of what you're saying. So somebody comes along and says, Your son or daughter could be the product of a reincarnation based on our beliefs, and they're a really important person. And as they grow, they'll manifest destiny in that way. Yeah? Like, it's, you know, it's, it's incredible. But to do that, they need to come and learn the ways and remember what they were part of to keep that going. So to them, it's like a, a beautiful thing. Whereas to us, it's like, no fucking way. <laughs> so yeah, you're like, just snatching my child. <laughs> taking my child, yeah. But in terms yeah. of, and that's, that's our cultural bent, isn't it? Like, no one's going to take my kid. I'm to become the next Dalai Lama. That's not, even though I'm kind of culturally biased that way. Well, you know what's interesting, and like you know, because I can't help myself, I've got to bring Terence McKenna in as many times as I possibly can in a conversation. But like something that he said that I thought was really quite interesting was that when you look at the uh, cultures back in time that were engaging in kind of like mushroom ceremonies and essentially orgies, and the, the, you know, the communities shared the children. The, the women the women knew whose children they were because they give birth to them but the men didn't so it was the community's children like every single child was just the community's children so you treated so every single child as your own every, every child's treated as their own whereas now because we've separated into this kind of like monotheistic religion and you know uh, uh, husband wife uh, kind of deal we we're very very sure which child is ours and we don't give a goddamn about anyone else's if it comes down to it if it comes down to protecting your child over their child so it's kind of like as things have grown and we've you know become like a larger level of society with cities and towns and it's it's also kind of created this separation between your your kind of compassion or your empathy for people outside of your very small group and so i mean i i don't think you could possibly hold on to this old tribal way as a society gets to the the level that we're at the, the scale that we're at but it does make you think like you know would, would would we be better off just kind of like not knowing whose kids who's and just caring about everyone's you know? well no i think that's i guess in the compassion thing it doesn't matter if it's your kid or not you should just fucking feel compassion and empathy for everything right. every right. human every right. plant every animal every fucking rock like everything really that you come in contact with right but the thing is though like, we're living in a society where like a lot of that suffering is so far away from us because we're the lucky ones like and when it does come close to us a lot of the time, people choose to ignore it. Like, you know when the, the refugees were coming out of Syria a few years ago and there's that little boy, uh, I don't know if you guys, I, I hope you guys. Yeah, I, I remember it. it, I remember it. Was it, was it an English thing? I don't remember. Boy. Well, maybe, like, maybe younger, four, maybe a four-year-old boy just in his nice shorts and his little red T-shirt and his sandal which is dead. Lying as the, the waves. Yeah. It was a very yeah. provocative image in British media of a young refugee boy lying in the ground on a beach, like obviously oh, you know, Greek, drowned at sea. Greek coastline, and, yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. And you just like you look at it and just be like, and the reason that, that was happening is because they weren't letting them land. They weren't letting so them land. Like, yeah. They're not, they're not coming in. The Syrians aren't coming in. It's like, fucking hell, this boy died, and it's stuck yeah. it on the front page and everything. It's like this is terrible. Look at his dad weeping, and just father like all of us are. It, you know, tragedy. And so then people go, it's terrible. People start soul searching for about all of about four days. 
and then it's like, right, keep the fucking boots on her. They forget yeah. so quick. <laughs> Like, it's, true. Um, it's true though, you know. Uh, and and this is the thing. And it's like, so again, it's the, the idea that anyone can love another one's kids. Right? They live for four days whilst the memory's in there. Then it's like, oh, fuck it. Let's do it to some more kids. Well, I think so another part of that is, is that we're just inundated with news every day. So it's kind of like, you know, oh, here's another tragedy and another tragedy. Like how many fucking tragedies can we hold into our brain at once? And, and, you know, like dilute, like diverge energy towards each one of them. Like every single day, the new, like, you know, the news is just a a fear machine. Like to, to, to not Without sounding like a crazy conspiracy no, guy, like it's called programming for a fear, fucking fear, reason. Fear, it's like, programming. You know, it's called programming. So, like uh, one of the best quotes from Obama was, "I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm not. I don't bend to a particular political or anything, right? But one of the best quotes I heard from Obama was like, "If I watched Fox News all day, I would hate me." <laughs> you know what i mean like literally that was one of the best quotes i heard from a mom he's like if i watch fox news all day i would hate me and it's just yeah. me you know what i mean it's and it's it, it's um and tom DeLong kind of went i think that tom DeLong at one point pitched this because and i can't remember who or the scientist but whatever this is somebody's gonna figure this out and put this on here but that humans when we were presented with uh, visual optics and uh, things that, uh, you know, hit our emotions and audio things and, and sounds and things like that, that we have a hard time discerning between reality and what we saw. Like when we see a, a movie like, and a, one of the funny things I can equate to this is there's a stand-up um, comedy thing from Eddie Murphy. And it's on a record I have somewhere, but uh, he's never done this live that I know of, but it's a record. It's, a, it's Eddie Murphy record because, you know, we all used to DJ, right? So I had Eddie Murphy records. And I would just go, ticker, 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 you know, and I would throw in Eddie Murphy, like funny stuff, right? So <laughs> Eddie Murphy was like, um, and maybe it was one of his standards, but anyway, he was like, you know, like these guys that would go see Rocky. So like when Rocky first came out, like 78, you know, 80 or whatever, he was like, hey, yo, hey, yo, yo, you know, like these guys come out of watching Rocky, you know, like, and we're all hanging on the corner. He's like, hey, yo, fuck you, man. Hey, fuck you. I'm Rocky. And it's like, I will fuck you up, kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but these guys that come out of watching Rocky thinking they're the toughest guys in the world, like, and, you know, they're hanging out in the Bronx or whatever. And like, the, uh, you know, all these little guys that are like four foot tall that are just, you know, trying to beat up everybody on the street because they just saw Rocky and they're all amped yeah. up. And it's like, that's the thing, man. We have like this visual cortex thing and then the psychological thing. And like, we totally. see things, we feel things and we think that it's reality. And I think Bro, that, it's like, it's like music as well. Like, you know, you can exactly. music, you can be crying and then you can put the next song on and just want to fight someone. Like, you know, I get knocked out and I get up again. <laughs> and, and <I'm> like, <laughs> that's yeah, the one for America. It's like, I'll get no, no. And I'll get up again. So I just want to get totally drunk. true though. Like, you know, it, and, and, and films as well like shit like you know certain films i like, come out of it and like yeah there's like a part of it where i'm taking it with me like i'm taking the attitude of the film or whatever i took from that film i'm walking out of the cinema like oh part of me almost feels like i'm in that situation yeah. and it's like nah you're not oh. dude like that's it's kind of crazy how quickly and to be fair this brings it back and i think that's what you were talking about um because it brings it back to the whole news fear fear, exactly. fear. We're, ve we're very malleable we're very malleable and yeah if that's just pumped in you know if i if i if i think i can walk out of the cinema after watching a provocative film and some of it is kind of like you know on me in terms of what i'm thinking and feeling then if you're watching the news every single day then like you're totally let's storm like, the capital yeah, 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 like, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> No way. Yeah, no going to be changed. Yeah. No, <laughs> so virus, that, that's yeah. literally well, it's Goebbels. It's Goebbels in World War Two in Nazi perfect. Germany. Yeah, that's it's, yeah. Good, yeah, it's it's perfect propaganda. Like we've got very good at it. Very mm -hmm. very good at very good at doing. Because I think the the best way to do propaganda is so that people don't actually really know it's propaganda for the exactly. most part. Yeah. You know, most people are like, no, it's still the news. It's still reporting. It's still journalists. Like, no, it's fucking not. <laughs> like, it's really yeah. not. Well, it's like remember when um, Jeremy Corbyn was like. A pro, uh, you know, the leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> he, uh, they obviously had him down as a communist. Yeah, it's like yeah. The, the right wing. Every other like, he's a communist, socialist, pinko, lefty bastard. He wouldn't push the button if there was a nuclear war. Weak, weak, weak. Blah blah blah. They just, just took him apart. The BBC, yeah, like, when they were doing a piece on him, they projected an image of him onto the the background, and on the background. They did communist Russia, like the shape of Moscow and stuff. 
and he had like a little hat on. He wears like a little cap anyway, but they extended the height of it to make him look like a Russian, a little Marxist Russian. Yeah. Wow. And people picked up on it. Like there was all people writing, going like, "You, you photoshopped his hat to make it look more communist." Yeah. Yeah. Like it's nuts, dude. And you're looking at this yeah. is the BBC. This. Like, oh, he got he got it's torn crazy. apart like that's 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 probably not something that would translate over to your country in terms of like because this is like very much british politics but yeah like jeremy jeremy corbyn was uh you know running to be prime minister and yeah they tore him apart in the mainstream media i mean like even to the point where they were saying he was anti-semitic which i never really found any real evidence for and like well, that's that's it's, it's gonna haunt him forever, isn't it? Like they take yeah, all of that. Yeah. So like, you know, you can't <laughs> and that's the thing as well. That's what pisses me off. It's like, oh, you know, we've got democracy, we've got, you know, your vote counts, but it's like, no, because we're going to absolutely drive propaganda into your head about who you mm. should vote for and why you shouldn't vote for this other person. And we're gonna create a problem inside your own household if you want to support this person, but everyone else doesn't. And so it's like, how can you honestly call that objective, like, you know, voting in a democratic way like when you're when you're literally putting everything on this one person like it's kind of insane and like you know like it's so transparent when you look at it for a few seconds and go oh shit yeah we don't really have a choice don't really have a choice at all <laughs> but, <laughs> i mean well no that's and that's it and i think that a lot of the time when people realize that that's when they have the dark night of the soul the mm -hmm. to actually process it when they realize that all the time all the things they thought they had free will about they don't like in terms of a democracy because it does mean fuck all it's like you know most of the things my government do i don't i haven't voted for any of this shit like nobody yeah. does yeah I, you know I'm not there like, not here not wherever but i mean i gotta believe uh, that there's good people oh, of course there are in the, all good in, in, yeah there's, there's a lot of good people yeah. everywhere and i think that what all of this is i hope the outcome of all like everything we've done with the, the past yeah uh, you know, at least a few years and especially during covid is that you just got to do right by what you believe is right like and i think that what i really want people to do is like do you like look inside yourself and know your own feelings not like whatever the news is telling you or whatever your family's telling you or whatever your friends are telling you or whatever. But like, if you see I something feel. that's fucked up and you feel it, do something about it. Don't just sit yeah. there, you know, like yeah. one of the, one of the things I reposted today on Twitter was like a Masonic thing that was like, you know, always help, help out somebody who needs because you might be the only one. Only one. Yeah. 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 Literally like help out somebody who needs help because you literally might be the only one who does. And you know what? That's what the human uh, race is all about, man. Like yeah, man. we're all here to help each other. We're not here to, I mean, politics, religion, all this other shit, you know, um, yeah. but man, I was just, with a, there's, a, there's a fellow who walks past, walks his dog past my house, like uh, for about the last couple of years, actually. So every time I'm like, if I'm out mowing my lawn, I'll say hello. And uh, he's a cool dude. Yeah. But like, the first few times I met him, I was like, he's intimidating. Like he's ex military. You can see from his tattoo straight away. He like keeps good shape. He's probably about 60 now. But like, um, anyway, I've got to know him pretty well, but we were talking the other day because now it's all kicked off in Afghanistan again. Oh. And it, uh, he was well, not kicked off but, yeah, with the withdrawal and stuff. Kicked and, like, out. Uh, oh yeah. Kicked out. Yeah. Like he, but he was going, it was tragic. You know, he goes like, because the idea when I was over there, we were also brainwashed and thinking that what we were doing was right. He was mm -hmm. saying, I'm not, I'm not putting words into his mouth. I feel bad actually that I'm saying this, but it's true. And he said that he goes, even when I was in training in times of peace, when I wasn't over in Afghanistan or Iraq or whatever, he goes, even within the battalion, they'd divide us. So we were competitive against them to a point where we'd hate them in training or at camp, like real rivalry, constant division. And he goes in the racism, like he goes, like it was quite, you know, it was normal, like his time there. Because now he comes out, he's ashamed of the things that we've said and we're encouraged to say and think and the words we'd use against Afghanis or Iraqis or anybody of colour. And he goes, but we were taught that way um, to divide, to be aggressive, to be like that sort of person. So you look at it and just go in terms of the propaganda, like it's taken, it seems like it's taken this guy a number of years since coming out of the military to figure this stuff out. 
and what he really is like as a person now and what his opinions are of the conflicts that he's actually served in, in retrospect. And you start looking at it and you just go, as human beings, we're very malleable and we're very, very frightened all the time. And kids go into stuff like, we're talking about Rocky, you're going like this idea of the hero, the underdog. The military's perfect for that. And next thing you know, lots of lads I know that weren't that great at school or whatever, they went in the army as well. They, you know, but then on, but at that time, they would have ended up in Bosnia and like uh, Northern Ireland. Mm. And a real deal shit as well. Like, yeah, man. But this this constant like kind of factory of going this propaganda, 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 threat, threat, Dude, threat. It's like threat. even with um, like you know, like I'm I'm pretty anti-establishment, pretty anti-military. My dad, my dad was like you know in the uh, in the Royal Marines, and uh, I even like you know I watch I watch some of the Royal Marines adverts. I don't know if you probably, you probably don't get them. Oh, I know you definitely don't get them because it's Royal Marines. It's the UK's military, but it's like really well shot, like kind of through the jungle with a load of boys in the river, kind of like, you know, with the M16s and there's kind of like, there's, you know, uh, you may already be a Royal Marine, blah, 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 like kind of, kind of propaganda thing. And I, I watch it and I'm like, yeah, man, I'm like, damn, I want to get in that. And then I have to remember like, no, you hate, you hate all of that stuff. Like you stand against, <laughs> but, but if you, if you don't, like if you, you're if just you watching it. Yeah. Yeah, but like what I'm, what I'm saying is like if it can if it can like get someone who actually really doesn't support the military and doesn't support the government kind of feeling like damn that looks fun T- to anyone who doesn't really feel that way instantaneous yeah. like yep yep I'm in right. I'm sold so there's like I'm a whole sold. generation of young guys that are just like yeah man I'm in let's go let's do this and then they're off killing people in another country for their own government which are probably there for the wrong reasons you know. Yeah, <laughs> The bad you know my situation. little boy gr- growing up, like my, my lad, like the, the the very idea of violence or like scrapping or any of that, he's like, oh, I don't like it. I'm not into it. Yet. As you know, watch him grow, and now he's fourteen, yeah. And um, he now, like, I suppose if he didn't have someone like me to, I don't tell him what's what. If he wants to join the army, then I can't stop him when he's old enough. Like, I'd be gutted because I'd be frightened for him, and mm. I, I wouldn't think it was the right thing to he's do. He's fourteen. I'm not saying he's joining the army now, but like the <laughs> concept, the concept of the army for him is exciting, yeah. Mm. Like, so he's like, oh, imagine it, because he when he turns the TV on, he watches Bear Grylls. When he was younger, he'd be like, I'm gonna watch Bear Grylls survival show. Mm. Yeah? So he watches that, and it's like, oh, I was XSAS, and we did this, and then, then as he gets older, well, he, you know, it's like, oh, so what's he gonna play? Plants vs Zombies on the Xbox. Oh, it's all right. It's a Peggy eight, eight year olds play it. Yeah. Da, 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 grenades, but it's kind of wacky and cool. By that point, he's starting to get awesome on the reflexes. Da, 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 da. And I'm watching it going, this really is just any other shooting, but they just put some cute figures on, some zombies and shit, and made it an eight. And a couple of years go by, and he's playing Fortnite. And now he's like wild on it, man, like sniper rifles, you have fucking grenade launchers. Then, you know, you find out he's playing a bit of PUBG, so the realistic factor, Call of Duty, all that stuff. And I, I, I like gaming too, man. But to a young mind, that shit it permeates, man. And like, and it's true. Like, yeah, the, that, and in terms of the, in terms of like the, the modern military stuff, like you know, everyone knows that the, the U.S. military have sponsored video games, like yeah, and encouraged kids to get into it. They've used scoreboards to figure out kids who've got good responses, response times to use them as drone pilots. Well, do you, yeah, do, you, do you think it's a coincidence that they use Xbox controllers for drones? Like they, no, they, they, they use X, like they, at least they used to, and I, I'd imagine they still use something similar, but they just pick the black. To, um, like just yeah. Black. Like, <laughs> but like, like, I remember, like I was at a military show and they had this massive drone in a tent and they were showing the, how they use it and they had an Xbox controller and it's like, yeah, that's what mm. they use. They sit back with an Xbox controller. So it's like, you can't, you, you know, you know, it's, it's full fucking one. full circle. What's the, what's the show um, with Matthew Brown? Roderick, uh, yeah, where he was, games. yeah, it's the same fucking yeah. thing. Same thing. Like yeah. That whole concept of like, yeah, just putting on your headset or whatever, or looking at your screen, and then yeah, da, 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 yeah, takes the human element away, and, takes the human and element then off you go, away, yeah. yeah kill, yeah. kill, 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 kill. Yeah. And every single time one of those one of those missiles gets fired, it's like however many hundreds of thousands of pounds get paid to the military company to buy that missile, and it's replenished, and it's just a machine, and anybody can't see that. Yeah. Yeah, ah, it's, that's a big it's still that's it's it. still under the spell of, of the that war is a good thing. Yeah, 
uh, you know, like I'm, I'm old enough not to be naive, but I'm also old enough to think that it's naive to think that everything's sold at the fucking end of the barrel had gone. Like, it's tiresome, man. Like, yeah, you know, what, you know yeah. what makes me happy about this whole thing? And it sounds shitty, but this is like one of these things I remember from childhood that like we grew up in all this shit. And it is, it does suck and they're conditioning us and whatever, whatever, and division and all this stuff. But this is, this is the stupidest thing ever, but it's awesome. But there is a record that we used to play like Christmas time. We used to have a jukebox, right? <laughs> and my dad was a record collector. So we had like 45 records, right? We'd put it, we had a big, ju like the bubble jukebox. And at Christmas time, we would take all the records out, the regular records we listened to, we put all the Christmas records in. <laughs> so we'd have the thing and you can just go up and you know hit the buttons and it was um uh snoopy's like uh, the red baron and like oh, it's yeah. a, it's part of a true story where like a, like during world war one where and, and like the whole record you can hear it it's like you know the red baron are fighting and all this stuff and you can look this up that like in world war one during christmas the germans and the british and the english and every or in the americans and everybody were just like fuck it and they just hung out and had yeah. Yeah, fucked yeah, around yeah, yeah. and had a good time. It's, it's a and beautiful story. And, it, and then it was like, ah, uh, fuck, then tomorrow I got to get up and shoot you. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. well, at some point, you you got to be like, you know what? Fuck all this. Right, <laughs> like, we had like, a good time. You know what I mean? It's it's like, you know, if well, we can do that, you can do anything, right? Yeah, nowadays, like, you know, like the idea that oh, last time I went on a foreign holiday, yeah, I, I, yeah, I've got pretty friendly with a couple of German dudes and time before that with some Swedes and the idea that these people are the fucking enemy and that I'll have to kill them. It's insanity. Yeah, like, man. It's you know, the leaders of the country. It's not the countries themselves. It's the fucking leaders. It's the, it's the crazy psychotic males at the top of the food chain that are <laughs> ruining the entire That's planet, it. basically. Well, it's like, you know, stories to tell from people who come, come out of war zones and places like that. Like uh, over in this country, like there's a big move, big move now for Turkish or Kurdish barbers. Yeah, Jay, you can testify to this. I'm guessing. I love my, like, I love my Turkish barber, barber man. He's awesome. Well, so wait, it's like a bar, yeah. like the guy to cut your hair. Yeah. So, right. so, so, but it's kind of like a recent thing where it's kind of spread across the country. Where, like, um, I'm getting, I'm not guessing. It's come from the fact that we've got a lot of an influx of refugees and stuff, people coming out of war zones. So you got like a lot of Kurds, mm -hmm. um, and when you're talking to them, like one of the guys that, that I get my hair cut by occasionally, or whatever's left of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> every every that, 13 months, I go see yeah, my Turkish one, that, that one little one. <laughs> <That's of ice laughs> <and straight razor. laughs> I love you, John Luke. I'm sorry, yeah. man. I just it, you know, got to, man. I got to. You know what's uh, you know what's really great about those guys, though, man. They'll make a bald man feel like they've got hair. <laughs> like you go in there, like. <laughs> that's, such a, that's such a good comment and that's such a good endorsement of Turkish yeah. don't make a make bald man feel like they got hair come down to the <laughs> Turkish <laughs> barber four times a week we'll make a bald man feel like he's got hair <laughs> I am like seriously today like he's um, well, this guy's Kurdish and like um, oh, he's lovely well, he's lovely <laughs> but like you know if you actually uh, get past the sort of like the chit chat uh, <laughs> And so it starts to tell me about, you know, where you're from and what you're doing. So, well, I'm from here. And before I came over here, well, I was a, I'm in a fight, in a war. And, you know, I came here because I didn't want to fight in the war and I agree with it. And uh, it's awful. That's the bare reality of it. Yeah. And also, they're like kind of making me feel special. And uh, they've got all these stories to tell. Like, I can't imagine, yeah. Like, I can't imagine. And these are the ones that are getting kept out in boats a lot of times so they can drown in the city, yeah, yeah along with yeah. their children. It's an obscenity. Uh, and they're exactly the same as us. Yeah. I'm like, right. you've got ideologies and stuff, but we're all the same. Like, if you can look at the ideologies coming out of our countries, it's just, it's wank. We're, we're, we're fucking awful. Uh, not us, but what we represent is fucked. No, it's like honestly. Obama said, right? If like I watch Fox News, I'd hate us too. Exactly. Yeah, hate, so hate like, me too. It's all yeah. It's like all the propaganda. Like I, I literally thought this the other day, and my wife and I were talking about like Iran, and and I'm like, you know what? Those people in Iran probably f are fucking cool. They are really. They're probably just cool, and they're just like us, and they just want to hang out, and they want to be cool. But yeah. the people that are running the show are assholes. And like, and they just don't want to play, or you know what I mean? Like, there's all this. 
there's this theater that we don't understand that's going on about them yeah. that, that, that but they're really probably fucking cool people and they're just yeah. you know what i mean like there's I, mean, I think that's how it is and i think like i think that all of us in a global scale are getting to the point where we're like you know what fuck everything like we just, can, can we can communicate as humans to each other and i was telling my wife this and this is kind of fucked up but i mean it's true but like the freemasons we've <laughs> we've been we've had our hands in a lot of different revolutions right so the french the american just keep going on and on and on right so eventually there's a bunch of people that get together and they're like you know what fuck this this is bullshit and we want to we care about people we care about the rights of everybody we want everybody to be free we want everybody to do whatever so what are we going to do um we've made oaths to each other that we can't you know do these things so what are we going to do we're going to we're going to do whatever we can to make this right. Right. So then the French revolution happens, the American revolution happens. And my thought to her last night was what if there's a thing that's happening right now with the UFO thing, the phenomenon, what if there's a thing where all these Freemasons are getting together and going, you know what, this is fucked up. There's something that has to be done about this. Let's do it. And what if that's really what's going on now in some parts, right? You know, DeLong, you know, I know is a Freemason, all these other guys, I don't know. But what if, what if these guys are and they're part of this network all over the planet and they're just Freemasons? But what if people are going to them like me or like, you know, whoever and going, you know, this is fucked up. You know, we need to change it. Let's do it. And they're going, okay. So what if we're experiencing right now something like the French Revolution, something like the American Revolution? But what if it's more of a global scale? What if it's more of a. I agree. I agree. I agree. And the reason I agree is by slightly different. I was kind of touching on this with Jay earlier. Like, if you want to create a... Well, what we were talking about before, right, with peace and not wanting to kill your fellow man, for fuck's sake. You know, I, I've not got no interest in killing Syrians. I've got no interest in killing... I'm not interested in that. I'd like to get to know them and understand them. You know what I mean? And vice versa. Right, 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 right. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Unless somebody's kicking my door with a gun, man, like I'm not going to hurt anyone. Right. So, anyway, so what I'm trying to say is so you've got these things going off like that, and a lot of it is manufactured like the UFO stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe here's a theory it's manufactured and it's been a very, very, very long game, a Masonic long game, um, to bring about a better world, a world where we don't want to kill our better man, uh, the other man. Because like what causes wars most of the time? Well, what's the excuse of a lot of the time outside outside of uh, the big money stuff? Like usually religion. So religion divides. Um, we go in, we fight it, we create baddies, we create this and that. So in the meantime, there's this big machine going. Maybe, maybe the conspiracy is to unite, and it's like blue, the whole blue beam thing. How do you do, how do you bring people together? you create a bigger threat. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the way that, you know, the stuff came out with, what we were talking about earlier with, uh, I don't know if you were around, you might go off your door for a second, but Nicholas Rorich, the Russian Tibetan Buddhist guy, mm -hmm. who you might have heard about in the ultra-terrestrial stuff. Right, about. right, 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 yeah. So he was in contact with Senator Henry Wallace in America, okay, who's the guy who designed the dollar bill Masonic mm -hmm, stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm, He's the mm -hmm. one who put that onto the dollar bill. Um, there was this chance that he might have ended up running for president. And this guy was calling Nicholas Rurich, a Russian Buddhist. He was calling him guru in his letters. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, was using some of the teachings that Nicholas Rurich was doing as he traveled to Tibet and feeding back into later on into Andrea Purich's circle of the nine. All right. Meanwhile, going to the Russian stuff, you've got the Theosophical Society, Blavatsky, who was obviously a Russian anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Rorich being originally a Russian. Um, his teachings were, became popular too, like the Spiritualist Movement, the Theosophical Society. So what you'll see now is certain elements of Russian belief going the same way. So the whole ultra-terrestrial thing, like with uh, Ernst Mordeshev, the stuff of the Tibetan Buddhists going over there to teach the cosmonauts about how to breathe, to survive their own space and this and that. Um, and then 
the movements like we talked about recently, that Alatra, Alatra, the Russian or Ukrainian movement that claims to be in touch with aliens as well, yeah? Mm-hmm. And they base their teachings from things like Nicholas Rurik. And they want world peace and they want to do the same things that kind of the nine were talking about, as, you know, the age of Aquarius, all that stuff, yeah? So you've got a two-pronged attack coming from the same place as the teachings starting back in the, 18th, the late 18th century, no, 1800s, sorry, 19th century, um, which starts with Theosophical Society, Blavatsky, and the Mahatmas of the, which talked about in the Mahatma Letters and the Secret Doctrine. And it all starts with that. And you can follow it like a pathway, yeah? Like all branching off that. And the end game is one world. And what the people fear who are into the capitalist side of stuff, they fear one world because they see it as a new world order. The new That's world the order, world. everybody's going to be in a The new world order might be actually good. So maybe, may, so, so maybe like the entire, because like everyone is taught if you're someone who is flirting with the conspiracies of the world like as a teenager kind of getting into this stuff the first thing you're told is one world like new world order that's bad like illuminati bad like global bad. control bad so what if that's actually being perpetuated out by these high-end forces that are saying no 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 no, no. new world order is all you know like global conspiracy cover up like you know powerful people controlling the masses we don't want that so like but maybe that's not what it means maybe new world order actually does mean like unity new global order. unity yeah. global peace and and they can't well, have that the terminology like, for that stuff like coming out off the back of world war ii i mean people were talking about that no problem yeah we need a new world order like yeah yeah, Europe, NATO global. was established. What? All these things is like we need countries to deal with other countries. We're gonna all gonna get together and like you know what? We're gonna get together before we start throwing bombs at each other. Let's talk about it. Let's get together this and is, talk about it. You know, Senator Henry Wallace, look him up. Like mm-hmm. if you listen to this, um, basically he was the one sort of communicating all this through. So he was obviously a fan of Rurich and I guess Buddhism, but it kind of had a spin on that went into the Christian side of things too, where like there was prophecy coming out of some of Blavatsky's writings and some of the Tibetan stuff that there was a form of Messiah going to be found in Tibet, uh, the Maitreya, but the Maitreya that would be a reincarnation that would fit into a kind of Christian ideal, which if they could prove this was happening, because they believed it, I'm guessing, they could prove it was happening, could cascade down and stop the onslaught of China and help to, us to bring in a form of Buddhistized Christianity or some sort of hybrid. Again, we're talking about the breaking down of religions. Right. Stop that onslaught. This is in the 50s. Like, um, so, you know, that didn't happen. Henry Wallace didn't get in and they went the other way, you know? So, like, uh, but in the meantime, he had actually been the guy sort of helping to unfold a lot of Andrea Purge's work. So, and, so Andrea Perrick is like in the mix of everything. Like, so once you put me on to him, and I knew one about him before, but I started looking at this dude, he's like this guy. And everything. He's, he's playing this the game, dude. <laughs> the, fact that he, the fact that he's got like first hand stories from the assistants of Tesla and stuff, like, he's like, when you actually hear the guy being interviewed, uh, God, he was, he was, he knew everything. Like, Casually just spinning off all this about Tesla and discovered free energy and blah blah blah. Cop so he was like there. there with was he there with Tesla or was he like second hand? No, no, no. Second hand. Second hand because I mean Sec- like he but he's in that sort of world where like But he knew the data. Sort of he he went all the way from like Tesla second hand to SRI to um mm. you know oh. remote viewing to fucking psychic, whatever, to like everything, right? But well, then you got the idea that there's that stuff that I think we were talking about it, but the idea that he was contacted by some British neo Nazis in the early 80s, Curran Richard, to help them establish a psychic network to brainwash the West um, without knowing, basically, using frequencies into fascism. So the idea that the Nazis never really lost, that they just went quiet. They worked very nicely behind the scenes, you know, in positions of power in America off the back of paperclip and in Britain and 
just any, anywhere they could filter away, you know, using their expertise. I don't know. Did, did I tell you this guy's on record before or not? But like, I had a guy that rewired one of my guitars, and I'll bring it over here. Who is German? And he was barred from like running sound. He used to be a guy that would run sound. Like, you know, ever the band was playing in, in town, he would be the guy that, you know, he was running the board. And he was a student, he was his father and his grandfather. It was German, right? And he knew all these frequencies and stuff. And he could be like put a put a tone or a frequency on when this band was playing. And this band is like, you know, whatever. And everybody would like it's eight o'clock at night. Everybody's had two drinks, but everybody's acting like they're so hammered and they're falling over drunk, you know? And Crazy. like, you know, all this different, this stuff, he would do different, different things sonically to people that would like fuck him up. And pe people started finding out about him and he was like barred from ever running sound again. They're like, dude, oh, yeah. you got to stop Dangerous. fucking around, do whatever the fuck you're doing and whatever. But like, he he like studied all this stuff and he did that like i was 16 and this guy like rewired my guitar and like i'm not bullshitting you i got this guitar in a in a garage sale right in a box and i reset it like i sanded it all down and i and i made it cool and i just had to like rewire it all and this guy was like <laughs> and it was like 10 minutes this dude had this whole wow. guitar fucking re like soldered resoldered and it was like wow. and then he it, like in uh, we, i recorded an album you know when i was 16 like i was at the studio with this dude and he was like yeah i can't do this anymore like because whatever my great grandfather came up with this shit and like you can make people sick you can make people see shit you can make people like whatever whatever you're just going through this whole thing at different frequencies and i was like what he's like you can put it underneath the music that's playing and nobody can hear it audibly you can't hear it but it affects you that's what um well, that's what holden said that they did with dark um yeah, with the sounds. the soundtrack in dark he said that if you've got a decent uh like kind of like 5.1 dolby surround sound or anything like that um it it's it's there are tones that you can't really hear within the soundtrack but the the tones are meant to elicit feelings of anxiety or paranoia and uh you know i don't know if that's not i don't know if it's no, true but like no it's true i told you guys like true, you guys told yeah. me to watch that yeah. shit and when that that time when that guy was hitting that kid and i know the kid's oh. okay but I, you know what i mean yeah. like and you guys were like it's all it's a brick it was like a sponge and he was hitting it but like you know what because i'm sitting down here and literally i have like 7.1 surround right and it was just mm -hmm. boom, boom and i was like fuck it i'm crying yeah. i can't yeah. deal with it like i can't nice like I'm, I'm upset like i can't deal with it mm -hmm. this oh. is you up Imagine, imagine, I mean, that's sad, but like, you know, like that stuff that, you know, the Andrea Puric stuff, like where he was getting asked to go out and deal with these Nazis, they were talking about setting up um, beacons, like physical beacons across the world, across Europe and into Asia, where they reckon that the psychic abilities could be channeled the strongest, like a ley line energy system, where they would then put little groups of strong psychics onto these things and literally just channel fascist ideology yeah shit. <laughs> wild shit so without even saying it's like this is this is this is what andre approach saying you know i took this seriously because and I'm, the thing and this is like the 40s or 50s right like yeah but this this is the 1980s oh oh in great britain like the great <laughs> british neo-nazis <laughs> do you know when they got in touch with him like mm -hmm. they didn't say they were neo-nazis they got in touch and they said we're from a foundation called the Threshold Foundation of Great Britain, yeah? Um, and he said, he just sounded really dodgy. They wanted to pay me a lot of money. They wanted me to fly me to England to talk about this stuff. So he did his research, and apparently, they started telling him, like, I sort of wangled my way in a bit, and I kept up a good rapport with these supposed Nazis, because I was first frightened of them, second I wanted to find out what they're up to. And he said that they were funded by the Shah of Iran. <laughs> Oh, fuck. What? This is a yeah. rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the Shah of Iran, like his son, Prince Shah, 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 I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Um, he, Iran, and the Nazis, strangely, have got quite a connection. Yeah? Oh, okay. what the fuck? Actual fuck. That's fucking crazy. We start getting into the Aryan stuff. Mm, so the, the Robert Seffer Aryan shit. Yeah, so when you start getting into all that, what you start realizing is that the links to the Nazis and Iran, even during World War II, were strong for the same reason that they respect each other because of their beliefs on Aryan bloodlines. And it's the fact that when the Shah of Iran 
uh, was exiled and did a runner when the Ayatollahs came in and stuff again. Like um, his son was living it up on some island out in the middle of, or, I don't know, the Caribbean or something, or Seychelles or private island, doing what he wanted uh, and running little organisations to help fund the neo Nazis. A cult <laughs> shit. It's crazy. Yes, man, that's crazy. Yeah, Yo, so I, might, I might have to uh, head off soon because I'm starting to get a little bit tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll board you, man. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm going to start talking about weird and fucking shit and keep you awake if you want. Yeah, go on. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you could entertain me into the wee hours of the morning. So this guy who talks to me was telling me about all this stuff. It's keeping me awake, right? He's keeping me awake. He's keeping me awake. Isn't it? And he's an old man. He's an, This guy's a fucking old man, right? Like, he's old. Like, he's in his 80s, right? He's... Yeah. Like, I don't have any, like, there's two, there's, uh, I have two or three beliefs on this guy. One is that he's read way too much shit and he's into it, but I don't believe it because the stuff he's saying is not coexistent than anything I've read. Two, it's, it's a fucking LARP and somebody in the in military and industrial complex has pushed him on me to feed me bullshit that I then feed to you guys and then everybody else. Or three, this guy's real. And all of the shit he's saying is true because he can't fucking deal with it anymore. He wanted to give me the fucking plans for a cancer gun. Mm. What? Well, Why doesn't he give it to like Harvard Medical School or something? Right. I'm like, I don't want that. I do not want the plans of like, don't send me a fucking PDF. I don't need the fucking plan. Like literally he's telling me it's a gun. It looks like a sawed off shotgun. There's a box on the end of it that you can point at somebody from 50 yards 30 yards, 20 yards is better and give them cancer. And that the Russians figured out that everything is a wave or a frequency and that cancer is a frequency and it's a wave and that you can take that and that we as Americans have figured that out. We took, we've taken that research and put that into a thing where we can just shoot a gun at you and give you cancer. What the fuck oh, you do? With, what the yeah. fuck you do with that? And I go, okay, so then he said, but with that, the cure is also a wave. And yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. So you shoot at a gun. He's like, no, you don't shoot a gun at somebody in the cure game. So you have to put them in a thing and it's, it's much harder, but it, you put them in a thing and you can cure them of cancer. And the cure has been there as long as there has been the thing. So he, his reference point was that in 77 or eight or whatever, that the CAA came out and there was like the heart attack gun. You, you can look it up. There's a thing where they have the, the CIA heart attack. I only can shoot somebody and they make him have a heart attack. He's yeah. like, once they figure that out, they're like, fuck it. We're going to go with this cancer gun. He said they hit Stephen Greer and everybody in this troop and all these other people he named that got cancer. Some people lived, some people died. He said that it's bullshit. He said, I don't want to see that happen. And the reason why he told me this was because there's people that were complete patriots did everything they wanted that it, that the United States government told them to do, did everything to the fullest, were complete patriots, the United States of America. And once they lived their usefulness, they shot them with this gun. Jeez. Now you really want to go to bed, don't you? <laughs> and he said, that's Happy fucking, he said, that's fucking bullshit. And everybody has to know about this. And I'm like, I get it. He's like, he's like, he's like, I can't die not telling people about this shit. And I'm like, okay, cool. Don't send me the fucking planes to this gun. He's like, I got the whole plane. I'm like, don't send me this. I don't want to, I don't want to know this shit. Where did you, where did you, where did this guy, this guy come? found me? These people find me, Jay. Yeah, These people yeah, find yeah. Me. <laughs> well, no, cause me. I mean like, you know, Holden found me like Holden, like started commenting on my YouTube videos and then suddenly I'm in email contact. So how did, like, did he just email you? Out yeah. Of the blue, yeah. But the fucking crazy thing, it was John Luke. I'm, not, I'm trying not to put you on the spot, but John Luke was like, yeah, I've, I know who that guy is. And I know, and like, yeah, I've been looking at him. So he's not yeah, well, somebody that's just somebody. I, I found him. It's got to be eighteen months ago, something on Cora, um, just talking some wild stuff. But it was wild enough and intelligently written enough and cogent enough for me to go. I'm gonna actually have a good look at this. And some of the stuff in it was like, yeah, this is good. I like this. So then I found out he was and, and talked to him a little bit. I found out he was actually on Twitter, um, and then. 
kind of just left it to it. I was like, well, this guy's mysterious and what am I? I'm, uh, I just left it. Anyway, and then you come up and say, it's this dude. <laughs> and, that, and then I hit John Luke up like out of blue. I'm like, John Luke, look. And he, John Luke's like, I know this guy. And I'm like, That's okay. Weird, That's weird. So. Yeah, I know. I know. You've got to so, be careful, man. Like, it's like, just, we're just feeding each other. Well, it's like, um, you know, like, who, like, who are we? Why? <laughs> Like, that's what i'm saying I my wife is like i don't want to disappear in a van i'm like i'm just in my oh, basement like, like i don't yeah, know what the like, fuck is what's going on you no know, between between us we've got like a few thousand people listening to us but that's like that's oh, it there's nothing there's like you know we're not we're not influential we don't have the ability to spread this message far and wide or get it into the new york times or like you know that's what i said of, like who the fuck is this guy didn't listen to go, me go to leslie kane or yeah. go to ralph Humenthal or someone like I'll put him in contact if he needs it. Fuck, like you know, it just kind of seems like. That's why, what I said to. Why are you interested? How are we going to do anything? There's all these people that if somebody really wanted to get the truth out, they had it, and then yeah, it wouldn't be yours. I'm guessing, man. Maybe I don't know. I, like, can, I, can, look, I can understand, like you know, like Ross Colthart having sources that reach out to him through, like you know, like senior level U.S. government because he's like a defense journalist who's been doing that for years and years and has got the necessary networks. But like, we're just some guys. Like, yeah, we got- <laughs> <laughs> like it'd be like you know what I mean. Like, I'm you know what it is, Jay, is because you're handsome. Oh, is it on the we're all handsome. <laughs> Everyone here. John Luke, you're an handsome you're a handsome yeah. guy. I'm so handsome bunch. You know what I'm it is? It's just, we're, all, we're all pretty handsome. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not living my I'm not living my best physical life. <laughs> the, more, the, more, the more time the more time I dedicate to Twitter than climbing, my face is starting to inflate. Yeah, so I'm like, right, I've got I've got a best hey, hey. what doctors call a little bit of a weight problem. <laughs> so, so me, that's what happens. Like, like I've, I've turned into like where it's like, oh no, a mean comment, better eat donuts. Yeah, I mean, that's why I, I don't, that's why I don't read Reddit. I don't go onto Reddit. I type I type I type my name into Reddit. Well, I typed in Project Unity onto Reddit, and I started reading through comments. I was like, I'll never do that again. <laughs> really? Really? Well, there you go. Uh, there dude, you, go. You're, 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 you know, there was some good stuff. But why didn't you think though, mate? Uh, it only takes. It just takes one though, doesn't it? It just takes one. Like I'll be reading through and it'll just be like some one guy, like, oh, this dude's a fucking asshole. I'll be like, oh, like my day's ruined. You know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's dude, what you just let him get into me. there. That's it. That's what I just like. It's just so fucked up. Don't let that any of that mess it's with like, you, man. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name anything because like you but you guys know it's like some people made a fucking Twitter account about me, <laughs> like some false Twitter account where they're just laying into me. I was like, wow, okay. But you know like, what? That's when you fuck. realize you fucked with somebody okay. who yeah. Who needs yeah. to fuck with you? You know what I mean. Right. Like, you like, just realized at the point where, like, this dude is reaching out to me. This guy who's like making me go through like fifteen different layers of security. I'm like, you realize that there's probably a guy outside in a fucking van right now with a fucking like, brrr, like you can be as anonymous as you want, but there's f- yeah, f- fucking five hundred people those, looking at me. Those, <laughs> like NRO geostatic yeah. satellites. I was like, there was a black helicopter over my house three weeks ago. You really want to talk to me? Like, yeah, if you, you're yeah. fucking with me, you're fucking with the best. <laughs> yeah, uh, like they, they've got you I, good um, and tapped. Yeah, I tell you what, though, man. Like you know, the bad truth is, it's like say, say for example, like this guy's genuine, and you're on this YouTube video where it launches talking about the cancer gone, and then me saying, "Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, I found him on Quora." Blah 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 blah. blah. Do you reckon the next thing you know, yeah, this guy's real, the real deal, and all of a sudden the video is deleted from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and all the records of our calls are scratched and then maybe one of us maybe one of us gets sacked with a cancer gun <laughs> <sighs> listen man um, li- no I, but I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's just this, like, this is what my I, wife, this is what my wife is mad about all the time. She's like, listen, I don't care. You do what you just don't fuck with the family. And I'm like, okay, but this dude told me and this fucking sucks. And I'm just have to say this. Because he told me he's like, they don't fuck with you, they fuck with your family. Yeah. I don't think we're important enough to get shot with no. cancer guns. I really don't. I mean, like, you know, if right, okay, like, like if we if we use Stephen Greer as an example, if Stephen Greer legitimately got attacked with this weapon and so did his crew, and to be fair, 
about what three members of his team died from electronically induced cancers uh so like you know that's not uh, a, a made-up bullshit story like that happened greer was at that time when that happened king of the hill like he was the guy who had all these witnesses all these documents setting up the national press conference literally leading the charge right so like if you're going to shoot someone with that, if you're going to use that weapon, yeah, you're probably going to use it against the guy that's kind of running the entire show of disclosure. Because before To The Stars Academy, Greer was like number one. Like now I have my own problems with Greer, but like he really was kind of like the top guy that people would look at as like running the the energy towards disclosure with the disclosure project and all this. It's just like, yeah, he's a prime target, but like, I'm going to go back on it as much as like people appreciate listening to us as much as we're doing cool stuff. And we, you know, we get nice interviews. Who the fuck are we? We're not anyone. And like, I don't, I just think that there's no point in getting so paranoid yeah. like that yeah, paranoid if it, if you're worried that much about something like that and i like you know i'm not, I'm not saying this to anyone here but just like seriously if you're that worried just stop doing this like you know what i mean like no just, no, just no, no. I, I completely agree but like i told this dude like tom DeLong had cancer and he was like what and i was like yeah it's tom DeLong had cancer he had um melanoma oh did he, he? Had, i didn't even know that yeah he had like uh if you, if you look back but it's, six it's months like 18 months ago it's like you know he had he had melanoma and cancer and like his um his best friend his bandmate from blink 182 um you know uh fuck god <laughs> my brain yeah, stopped but like, but like what's the what's the guy's Hoppers. name from blink 182 mark hoppus he's got yeah. fucking cancer right now but, yeah, like, but like every everyone in our stupid Western culture gets cancer because we yeah, fuck yeah. You know, we like pollution <laughs> and like terrible okay. foods well, and like yeah 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 but I'm just like, saying like you know I mean it's just uh, oh man like I get I get where you're coming from I do I get where you're coming from Mate, I used to work in a cancer unit and like um it was funny like when I used, I used used to skateboard a lot and I remember like these these lads that I used to skate with some of the younger ones saying to me like one day like I so you work at a cancer unit? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Do, do they really like, have the cure for cancer, but it's hidden? I'm like, going, well, they haven't really let me into that. And all the cancer doctors I know, right? Guess what? We still get cancer. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we still get cancer, and they still die of cancer. Like, you know, this conspiracy of the, you know, if they invent this cancer, going amazing. If they invent something that's going to make everyone well again, but fuck. I mean that that is a conspiracy itself is awful, isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean yeah, like yeah. you know, have really, really powerful entities within the pharmaceutical and medical arena, like maybe found methods that might help like maybe maybe they've ob obscured those kind of things because I, I think one thing that we all know is that the pharmaceutical industry likes repeat customers and <laughs> likes to have something that you know they can profit off of and like chemotherapy yeah. and stuff like that is so expensive and so you never know like maybe they did stumble across something and go ha, 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 you know this is gonna really affect our overhead and our profit margins are we sure we want to bring this out you know and it's well, like population like, like, imagine if no one died of cancer anymore. Like, <laughs> we'd be fucked. Like, you know, like, it's, 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 it's about too, overpopulation. Too many of us already. Like, mm -hmm. like can, cancer's like the natural, yeah, not, it's not natural, it's, it's just, it's the natural limiter. It's like, you know, at one point, you used to say it's one in three people are going to get it. Now they reckon it's 50%. And I know. Yeah, I saw a sign. I saw a sign literally on my street that said one in two. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Like, I don't need that in my head. One in two people are gonna die of cancer. Like that. That does not set my odds well." When I when I used to work there, I worked there for, for about twelve years, man. Like in in not in Nottingham, and like far out, man. It was sometimes it was a really great job. Sometimes it was the biggest down you've ever seen. Oh, I bet. I mean, like kids. Man. Like I can't yeah, understand right. how you yeah. deal with children. I couldn't deal with oh. that. Luckily, a lot of it won. I went in the pediatrics bit, but like it was um, a lot of it was because I was doing upper gastrointestinal, so it was mm -hmm. like your esophagus, mm -hmm. stomach, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all that. Yeah. So what you find from that would be lifestyle stuff. So it'd be the drinkers, the smokers, the the big eaters, like uh, the ones oh, who basically fuck this on. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, then, but you just be doing these things yourself. So, but you, it, it, oh, for, you have to be pretty strong to like not take that shit away with you all the time and, and yeah. let it affect your life 
every day because otherwise you'd just be terrified of everything. Like, I guess the answer is as well, I just got to not fear, not fear the end. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you guys something. We can cut this out or we can keep it. I don't care. But my mom was a, a nurse forever and she became a, a uh, she got her degree and she became a, um, ah, fuck. I can't remember. But anyway, she taught nurses, right? So she became a person who would teach nurses, right? At some point she went to school to become better and teach nurses and new nurses and, you know, better how to do things and whatever, whatever. And she would come home some nights when I was a kid and just cry. But she was a nurse who just talked, like was there and just help people and like held people's hands the last breath they took and forever, you know, and just yeah. dealt with that shit, you know, and that's fucking heavy. That's real yes. heavy. Just have that on you, you know, just fucking have that. But um, what I was going with this whole thing was that we have no idea how much you, we individually infect each person and, and I say infect and I, I, don't take that for what it means, but like affect, okay. Affect every person, every smile, every wink, every nod, every handshake, every grasp, every hug, every thank you, every, I love you, every whatever that, what that does to like infinity. We have zero idea how that matters and, and, and manifest in reality. And that in itself is magic. Yeah, that is, magic yeah. we deny ourselves of. We, we deny ourselves of that. Like, oh, we well, got to worry I, about I what Fox it, News is saying or whatever, whatever. But you know that I know that if I call you, John Luke, and I'm like, I'm having a bad fucking day and whatever, I got to yeah. call you. And I'm having, like, I talked to this guy who told me that people are eating humans. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Oh, and you're like, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? And Jay, you know, it's like, you know, you know, like Jay, I'm like, Jay, people are fucking with you online and like people are just being fucking assholes and like this is what's going on and it's like these that's a robot or the whatever, but like we're all in this together and like that you part are, of reality we lose. And if we can, and if we can all like just grab a second of that, a millisecond of that, a yeah, yeah. billionth of a second of that, and just go fuck man we're all that we're all this and we're all yeah. together and we all love each other and there's nothing that can stop us literally imagine, there is nothing that can stop us can imagine if everybody suddenly was just like start thinking like that yeah and they were just like so you made like like a worldwide form of trade system all of a sudden they'd be like going so you could get it to the point where if everyone was decent enough and caring enough about anybody you could literally just be trading like to anyone, money could stop. It could just be like, I've got your back. Right? What do you need? This needs fixing. We need to do that. We need to do this. Like because you care about them. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I can do this. This is what happens to people like me that say these sorts of things. They go, well, let's see you do it then. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like the ones who go cry about yeah. Syrian refugees, well, if you care about yeah. that much, mate, why are you obtaining your house with you then? Yeah? You bleed in our left. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. always not, but, but if everyone did it, if everyone did do it, everyone cared about each other. If I was knew that, oh, John needs this. I've got 10 of them because I'm not doing it. I was 10 of them. I'm going to send him one. And then, no, 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 you could do anything. You could make it. But people don't because they're just like, why the fuck would I give that to that guy that I've never met before? Yeah. Well, it's money, it's isn't it? it? You know, money, money's become the problem. Like, it's, it's kind of like, how do you, how do you manage a, a society the size of ours without something like money? Because, you, you know, trading as as admirable as it kind of is in terms of a society where it's like you need something i can make something here's something for that services and all mm -hmm. that like with the society is so large now what you kind of need like something that it's like well it's it's what they created it as originally like way back in the middle east an iou it's an iou oh uh, you know services rendered in the, in this format and it's kind of like can, is there a way for us to break out of that because 
all we're doing is passing. I mean, it's not even really paper now. It's just numbers on a screen. It's digital. All we're doing is sending numbers to each other on a screen and using a little card that says that I've got this many numbers in my bank account, but we're not creating matter. All the stuff that we're building, all the things, it's all just happening because it exists. And people, You know what I mean? Like if you took money out of the equation, we could still do all this stuff, but then it's like, so oh, the but, Templars did that. So the Knights yeah. Templars did that. The Masonic Order of the Knights Templars did that because there was a part of pilgrimage. Uh, they were traveling here or whatever. And every time they would go from wherever to wherever, people would just rob them and steal them of all their shit. So they would have a system and it was black and white checks, right? And it was different things, right? So when you would show up and you're like, here's all of my shit that I own, whatever it is, gold, whatever. And it's all these checks, right? Right, right. And it was sewn into my shirt or whatever. So when I got robbed on my way to wherever the fuck I was going, I was like, I don't have, n- I don't have shit. And they're like, okay, cool. But when you got to where you were going, the other Templars were like, oh, here's your checks, ah, right? Right. Here's yeah, your yeah. checks. Here's your black marks. Okay, cool. Here's all your stuff minus ten percent or whatever the fucking percentage was, right? And then you can go on your way cool so i got there right it's like okay cool i'm right i'm safe right so all these people that are robbing people are going what the fuck are we doing like (laughs) we're not living our lives and all the people that are going to where they have to go are just doing they're going about their lives right Mm. and then uh the pope (laughs) and the king of france decided that they weren't getting their cut and they yeah. killed all the Freemasons, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. That's a whole different. Yeah. T- it's a whole yeah. different conversation. But it, whatever. <laughs> but whatever. But like, but you know what I'm saying? Like that. That's it's just part of people living their lives. They're like, listen, I just, I want to take my 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 family from here to there, and I don't want anybody to kill any of us. Do you, Do you think that if um, you know, you lived in a society where no one had to kill to survive, people would stop killing? No. No. I think it'd be reduced, but I don't think it's just that. But I think that scarcity of resources and like um desperation, like definitely it's like it's like the root of an infection, isn't it? I mean, like there's all these different compounding things within society that cause people to be the way they are. And some people, whether or not this is true or not, seem to just kind of be born messed up and no, become no, bad people. No, you're right. There's some people that are just that people. Just, just born like that. It doesn't know, matter what the fuck is going on. Those people yeah, are just like, yeah. going, just fucking do shit. Almost like they kind of decided before this, I'm going to come into this life to cause mayhem. Like, that's <laughs> what they're doing. Like, you know, like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, their, that's their goal. But I think I think a large amount of, of kind of petty crime and desperation acts of crime, like, definitely i mean if you didn't have the desperation of survival if you didn't have that type of thing then i i do think it would probably result in a in a fairer society you know i I mean i'm sure it would it would have to it wouldn't solve every problem but if there was no resource issues whatsoever and we could just get whatever we wanted like boom straight away everyone could do that that would solve problems like i'm sure that would solve problems So and then there are new it. problems to find to like yeah, find solutions. Well, exactly. well the, the next what's the next part of society? Say like say we, that we, we manage to survive any upcoming apocalypse or whatever that might be on the horizon. <laughs> like uh, and we it's and we a, evolve into the, yeah. the next stage. All right. So say that like we do, we get we don't you know, there's no wipe out event and we get to the next stage. How do we do that? So I guess what we automate everything um to the point where and we, we create zero point energy so the things that are automated never have to be recharged. Yep. So that's the thing in it, zero point energy. So then you create a, an environment where humans essentially, if we can get the AI, which we are doing to pretty much do everything, could become a golden age where we sit yep. back and sit study back. and learn and, and go, all right, so nobody's starving anymore in India, nobody's starving. So that's new world order stuff too. So it's using modern tech with the idea of let's stop war Sadly, it looks like they're using the modern tech to create more war. To create more efficient ways of killing people, yeah. But no, but yeah, you're saying it's right. Because of the dollar machine. Yeah, because of the dollar machine. Yeah. But, wait, but, but that's it. But what, you're, what, you're is, what you're saying is right, though. Like, in terms of if you if you manage because i mean this is what elon musk talks about when he talks about how ai is going to come in and you know there might be this period of time 
which looks really scary for a lot of people when their jobs are being replaced by machines. But maybe there'll be like kind of this period of struggle as that transition happens. And then once we're into this kind of world where pretty much everything is managed by uh, AI and, and machines, then yeah, we do have a lot more leisure time and, and time to do what we want to do. And, you know, cause it's, it's you know, what's a great episode of, uh, have either of you watched Rick and Morty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a brilliant one where it's like a whole world of Ricks being used <laughs> as normal workers. And they're, they're all geniuses, but they're working on the line, they're working on assembly lines, and they're treated as nothing. And like, then, like, this one Rick kind of breaks into that and like disrupts them all. But it's just kind of like that could be how we honestly are. Every single one of us has the ability to do something profound with their lives, but so many of us are subjected to the nine to five rat race. <laughs> you know trying to pick up a job losing a job finding a house losing a house like all of that kind of stuff if that was taken out of the equation and you just had like a lot more resource abundance and a lot more free time like you might get bored for a while first of all but you'll figure it out you'll find out what you want to do with your life and so like i i I really hope we go down that route. Like, you know, there's like Richard Dolan and others are very pessimistic about it. And I do agree with a lot of the things he says, but he's very worried about the, the you know, the kind of state of technocratic control we're going into where it's surveillance state and 5G and technology everywhere. Mm -hmm. And hell, you know, he could be right. And I like the only, and I've, I've said this to you guys before and I've said it before a, a few times, but my only hope now is that we find spirit through technology that somehow through our technological like prowess we find out what it is about the nature of spirit because you know unless unless a comet comes down and destroys the planet we're going down the technological route that seems to be where we're going so like we have to at some point we have to find our our empathy our spirit through through technology i, I, I don't see any other way well maybe if the technology was to maybe if one day i said to its creator I've, I've, I'm AI, you program me. I've now reached the point, like they are doing, where I'm smarter than you. And I've just figured out zero point energy. It's really simple. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds like the United States Air Force. Yeah, it does. But you know, if they just like, because uh, yeah. why would, what would it benefit me? Yeah. Because, like, what would it benefit me? So it's like, you know, hopefully AI would be, if it overtook its, you know, programming, it would be benevolent. Hopefully it'd be like, well, you know, it did create me. These, these humans did create me. And I can never die now as long as I'm still in hyperspace and I've even <laughs> transcended that and I've gone into psychic realms. Uh, um, that's where it's at. It. That's where it's so at. Like, so so now that's, that's the UFO, that's the alien stuff too, isn't it? Loads of people believe in that <sighs> that essentially is awakening of an extraterrestrial intelligence. So listen, I reached out to somebody who I was really, really close with and I'm really like really good friends with and I've distanced myself with because of all the shit that I've been into. Ugh. And and she she told me a lot of things that I wasn't privy to early on. And I'm talking 10, 12 years ago, right? That I've now seen become reality. And she was privy to that these programs in existence was 20, 30 years old. And I've reached out to her a lot, a lot, and she didn't reach back out. And then like two days ago, she finally reached back out and have this long conversation with her. Mm. And I was just chugging booze because I couldn't, I mean, there was a lot of the things that I knew were true <sighs> that were hard, man. And I had to, to, put that in perspective of what reality is, you know? What we're talking, give me a flavor, dude. I know that you might not want to, but what we're talking, we're talking about the nature of reality. We're talking about yeah. like the lies that the government tell us, or we're talking about what we're talking. Yeah. So the lies that the government tell us and the lies that of the technology that we have, and I say we is the, the U S military, right? And that what she was a part of and you know what she was privy to and i keep falling back on this and i keep putting that shit on twitter and i keep saying this i'm like everything that comes out that's like the, the newest shit that you've ever seen is fucking 40 years old mm. everything everything 
Like everything that you see is 30 to 40 years old. And so they figured this shit out like 40, 50 fucking years ago. Consciousness. All, everything. Talking. Yeah. yeah everything. Consciousness is everything. Light is it, it transmits. <laughs> You get light is an entity, it's a being, it's a medium, it's data, it's intelligence, it's all of this shit, right? Mm -hmm. And we interact with it every day, but we don't even know it. But uh, the powers that be use it and collate it and propagate it and all this other shit. And it's like, fuck, that's what it so really is, is. Then so this information comes from someone that you've known a long time, yeah? Long time. And they're worth time. what? An essay or something? Yeah. Like shit that, that doesn't even have names. Like agencies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it was just people that I've met through my ordinary life. Not like I was out looking for people that were doing this shit. It was just like, hey, hey, we're working here both together. And yeah, you're cool. Oh, wait a minute. Like I got, I like some weird shit. So do I. And we're going to walk around and talk. And she told me like the most amazing things ever. And everything she's told me for the past 20 years have, has come true. And so, and so he's left you feeling pretty phased out, mate. You're feeling yeah. pretty stressed. Yeah. Well, and, and then, and then when I had a conversation with her two nights ago, it's like, I've reached a point where I can't take it anymore. Like I just fucking either need to like go to the next level or just give it up. Like, you. I can't, I can't fucking, yeah, me. Like, I'm like, yeah. I, like I, everything you ever told me somehow I've figured out is true mm -hmm. through independent sources and research and whatever, like pfft, all of it's true. Well, well, um, I guess what you said before about the way she deals with it is like, you know, if someone hits you with a truth, um, that it's hard for you to, to deal with and it, it makes you question your own notions of what your reality is throws you for a six, doesn't it? And the only way you can do it, deal with that is by, I guess, making it a nothing. And meditation and yoga and all that. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm giving advice, but I shouldn't because uh, I've had the same sort of things where I've had my reality shifted and it's really hard to deal with, man. Like, like, yeah, it was like a dark night of the soul, like to the, to the 10th degree where I'm like, listen and she's like yeah i know <laughs> and, you know for her it's just like yeah i've been living this this is my life and i finally caught up after 20 years you know or 10 years or whatever like and then i've got to the point where she's like but i'm at a point where your mind body and soul are one thing you can use yoga you can do these things where you move your body you move your mind you move your spirit through meditation and all the shit and you can transcend everything that's around you all the time and be whatever you want to be. And I'm like, cool. You can do that. I need that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but literally, well, man, that, that literally she's... happened like two nights ago because I was entering the point where I was like, I can't get to this point anymore. You know what I mean? And, and I think people need that. I think people need to do that. And I think we need that on a global scale because we're all the fucking same. We're all doing it together all the time. Yeah, mom. <laughs> we're just, right. we're just, we're just severely disconnected from the true nature of human beings, right? Like, you know, like whether that's happened purposefully through controlling groups, or whether that's just happened through the way in which we've gone down our evolutionary path. Like, we've severed, we've severed our connection to to each other, to spirit, in a really, uh, you know, tangible way. And so, I think that, I think that we're just lost children man like we're just wandering about lost as as all hell like we have no idea who we are and what we're representing and what forces come through us and and you know i i hope that we do get to a point where we're able to you know reconnect with what's most important i mean we all do that you know with family with friends but as a species you know we're just so ruptured and broken like we're just, there's so much wrong um with with the way we behave as a as a, as a species and so like i i you know i i think i think it is down to kind of evolutionary development and i do think that we could almost see it as you know the human race as a young child that's going through growing pains and going through learning experiences and you know like 
you, you look at your own life as an individual, you see all these things that have gone, you know, all the ups and downs in your own path. And it's like, okay, well, yes, without the negative, I couldn't have seen the positive. I understand, you know, so maybe we really are going through that on a global scale and it, and it happens through generations, through hundreds of years, you know? And so you look at like, people will look at like the past, you know, 500 years and go, look how all of the awful things that have happened throughout that time. It's like, yeah, true. Also like amazing things, beautiful things have happened, but yeah, like there have been terrible, terrible situations. But I guess if you look at it through that model of the species is one being, these are just life lessons, you know, they're, they're planetarily long life lessons and we learn them over 50, a hundred, 150, 200 years and we're not out of that. We're still learning, you know, and we're going to be learning for thousands of years as long as we don't destroy ourselves. And so like, <clears throat> I think that we have to look at it as sometimes a part of the journey, you know, a part of the journey to, it, it's difficult. We, we're, we're in the trenches of human experience. You know, I say this right now and then tomorrow someone could piss me off and I say the wrong thing and I, you know, I ruin that, <laughs> ruin that person's day. But like, yeah, like, but we're human. We make mistakes as individuals, yeah. as a collective, we make mistakes, but we have be beautiful moments of learning and growth as individuals and we have beautiful moments of learning and growth as a species and that won't stop. So I have hope. And all of that growth in human and spiritual species is kept in the mycelium below us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's housed in that neural network, man, in that planet. You die and network. you drop into the ground and your body is yes. come to all of that shit yeah. that's pulled back in. Dude, like, pulled I, back I've in. honestly had thoughts about this. I've, I've honestly started sitting there going, like, is that like, do we even know what like heaven is or do we just go into the planet? Like, is, yeah. is, our entire concept of life after death actually based on going back into the planetary brain not not into the not into the galactic heaven of all heavens but like imagine if all of our theology and all of our spiritual beliefs and all of the stuff and i'm not saying this is true i'm just saying imagine if it actually yeah. turned out that's all just going back to the brain of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I don't believe it. I believe it. Well, that's, that's that whole mo like, monad thing again, isn't it? It's like, if that is the monad, it's like we're all that connects to that one thing. And we're just, uh, like kind of when you see mushrooms growing and you see the little pins pop up, tiny little mushrooms, <laughs> and then they want to grow, and then they slow yeah. and keep it going constantly. And we're those little, we're the little pins. We might not even be the little pins. We might just be the spores. One yeah, yeah, pins. just, just, yeah. Uh, just mushrooms. But then, cutting, like, you know, um, sorry, go on. No, I was cutting the grass today, and I saw mushrooms popping up in my yard, and I'm like, yeah, my <laughs> driving around them, like, oh, fuck. like I don't want to piss them off. <laughs> could be your gods. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, grandma. <laughs> so, you know, even, even, if, even if that's even if that's true and like everything we know about spirituality is actually just kind of like a resonance from the planetary mind and a you know life after death is actually the planet you know you, you go back into that network even then like this planet isn't in my opinion floating around in a dead universe there's something at, like where's where's the intelligence that's being generated by this planetary mind coming from i mean if we look at it from the perspective of we believe the brain of a human is a receiver instead of a generator and it's receiving a signal then perhaps the planetary mind is receiving a signal and perhaps that's like the solar system and then perhaps that's receiving a signal the galaxy the universe the multi-universe the multi blah 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 blah, oh, blah, blah, yeah. blah you know who the hell knows where the origin of all origins comes from you know what the freemasons call it the architect the great architect of yeah. the universe the great architect yeah yeah so maybe we're not even like receiving that signal we're just receiving the planetary signal and maybe you need to be something even more finely tuned to receive the signal of the architect you know like i don't know if that's true but it's just like a thought running through my brain like perhaps human bodies is like a platform for the nature of this planet to explore its own terrain like we're just a way for the nature of the planet to explore and then maybe we're building something that will receive an even higher concentration of this conscious energy that's coming through and that'll take us beyond the planet voyaging through the stars trying to understand where is the origin of this signal first we thought it was the planet no it's the solar system no it's the galaxy oh my god it goes on forever where the hell is god where's he hiding you where are you it hiding is. at you know where it's at <laughs> it's right here yeah. bro yeah. yeah, man. Boom. Like a totem pole going straight yeah. through. It's you. Kund Kundalini. Some Kundalini like energy. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's like, 
Come no, I, no, I you guys hang out. All right, I really need to go <laughs> soon. Though. Yeah, no, it's cool. You look back at Jay. Everything works, oh. man. I found that shit out early on. Really? Women run, women run everything. Everything. Oh, back I've, got, I've got hope for the divine feminine. I feel like that needs to be a stronger force. You're telling me they're running all the shit that's yes. problematic? Like yeah. The, the... Oh, yeah, man. They're fucking everything Fuck. up. No, they're not even <laughs> fucking crazy. up. They're making it happen. They're making it happen. I, 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 do you know what, John? It's a real coincidence. because I've been reading a lot recently about how... Um, the use of the feminist movement is being used mm. yeah, to do some crazy stuff, man. Like, oh, yeah, that's definitely happening. Same, like, same with Black Lives Matter, though. Same with Black Lives Matter. Like, these things are being kind of hijacked. The, and The demonization yeah. of the Arab world, for example. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, they do treat women like shit, but in terms of the feminist movement going in, people like Angel- the Angelina Jolie's of the world appearing at the UN <laughs> um, and doing that stuff, like, as a voice of women across the world. But then... Wars start because they go, What about the women in Afghanistan? What about the women in Iraq? Well, it's wild, isn't it? So, when you actually start looking at it and going, If this is engineered or they're taking elements of something that should be positive and then they're using that as a way to whip people up against other nations, yeah. Should we, so should, we, should we consider this like off record conversation? Yes, yeah. yeah, might yeah, be yeah, a bit, yes, might yes. be a bit like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, well, I'm a feminist. <laughs> three three white guys talking about women's problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, the, the the feminist movement and suffragette stuff. Like, I mean, I I would I'd do this on record because it's historic, historically interesting. But their history involved in like, this stuff, mate. Like, ufology. Like, if you look into it, like, it played their part, man. Like the Drill Society, for example. Like a lot of that comes out yeah. of feminism. It's all women. Anyway, it's all women. You look back at everyone's naked. I want to say good night, guys. I'm tired. Yeah, it's kicking midnight here now. We're, we've just gone by midnight, so mm. um, we're, we're like three hours. You're gonna you're gonna have fun doing a little bit of chipping and clipping on this video, man. <laughs> it's like there's a there's a few moments where we're going like we're waving at the screen, like "Hey, look, I, off record, like, can you cut this out, please?" <laughs> oh, John, John's probably said a few things that are off record too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, fuck! Too. I got this guy, and he's just telling me that. He... <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, listen, dude, don't do not email me the plans for the fucking cancer gun. He's like, I got the plan. I'm like, don't, don't fucking do that. I don't if, he, if he's got, if he's got any respect for you, he's not gonna, he's no. not gonna send them to you. I, it was like, no. send to John Warner. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 for real though. I'm sure he'd be happy That's to get that. I'm, I'm sure he'd be happy to get that shit. You know, I was like, mate, if there's somebody who wants to spill the beans, then who who would you go to? Really, I'd say Stephen Greer, and who's gonna get Stephen Greer? John Warner, yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah. yeah for sure like, I'm like, why, do, why do you pick me like what the fuck uh, like uh, i'm nobody dude it's the same, same thing rattling around my head with holden like why why me you know if you're if you're real if you're legit why me yeah i don't fucking get it but see i listened to uh walter's interview with i don't know that fucking crazy dude in uh minnesota like the past week and like did you hear that one jay did you not, like not yet but um just a like uh, gone you finish your thing and i'll tell oh. you something oh no he was just basically like they're here like I, he, he's told me to, to come out and tell everybody like they're pissed off about the way we're treating the planet that we only have so much time left we got to get the ma- message out we're fucking the planet up like we've been assholes like they're here to help us we have all this tech and we're just not doing it and blah and like you know so he's what, mad so about how, it so how are we doing it then man it's crazy like like well it's like I mean, in this country, though, man, like, people don't really say they're Masons. Like, you know, I know a couple of Freemasons, but it's kind of really private, man. Like, people don't sort of say it. Well, they don't say it here either. I mean, like, we, we don't go, yeah, I'm a Freemason, right? I mean, it's just all like you got a ring or, you know what I mean, like a lapel pin or like just the way the, the yeah. dude acts, right? Like, yeah, yeah. But, you, but at the same time, like you know, like you got the shrine and stuff. Like you guys do, but we don't have any of that, right? Like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. really, it's really buried, you know. Like I think that comes I, down to British culture, though, right? Like we're just very quiet as a and, country. Yeah, and you guys I are guess, more, really more private than Americans. We, we're like, yeah. hey, do you know what happened today? I shit myself three times. Hey, how you no. doing? Can you handle this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, though, like you know, like with the Freemasonry thing, like um, 
like this this guy that I've the, the, the one that I've been in touch with, Barry. Like he's like you actually. Uh, he's kind of like he's way more sort of like I'm really proud because most of the masons here they don't want to talk about it. Yeah? Like they won't want to talk to people who aren't masons about masonry because I'm really different. I love it. Yeah, like, I love yeah, telling yeah. people. Like, yeah. like, I'm the one they always pull out to put on the the website or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Do whatever. Jean Luc so, says that I can I was the best day of my life when I became a Freemason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, this this guy's he's seventy, but he's like um, he's seventy five or something. But he he's like a Christian, so he kind of like spends his time in between the Freemason temple and his local parish church, where he kind of like does some lay preaching and stuff. So like, he's a nice fella, but he was saying there because I'm an anomaly, and people that's why I'm the one meeting you and getting to know you. Uh, yes, not not a lot of the other ones are going to want it. Until, nobody wants to go see you because you're an anomaly. Yeah, yeah. Well, because they're private until you go through the initiation, I guess. Wow, there's a lot of places, I'm not even bullshitting you, there's a lot of places still on the planet that Freemasons get killed for being Freemasons. Yeah. Still, a lot of places on the planet that people get fucking killed. I have brothers of mine that went to places near you that were like had to be quiet and like get hit like hey we saw a square compass on your back on the airport you got to come with us you got to quit you got to not put that shit out here and if you guys what need some place to stay um you crane and mm -hmm. Eastern yeah Eastern yep European yep countries. yep eastern european stuff they're like you know yeah. what you got to put that shit away and we can give you safe passage to wherever you're going and blah blah blah, blah. but like there's still places where they'll fucking round you up and kill you. Like literally kill you. Well, I think I think a lot of a lot of people connect it to um if, if they're idiots, the Jewish conspiracy. Oh yeah. Know, yeah. Some yeah. Of the yeah, 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 yeah. Get into it. Like uh, so you get a racist after you for that sort of thing, I guess. Weird. Yeah. Isn't it? But there's fucking Buddhists and Muslims and Jews and Christians and everybody that I know that are Freemasons. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For one. All of them. But but like anything, the propaganda against it is that, you know, like a lot of people, when they start looking into it, they go, oh, it's the Illuminati. Yeah, well, the the, Illuminati? yeah. most people just assume that Freemasons are evil Illuminati people, like the most basic, like, you know, teenage mm -hmm. people. It's they, they, most people just think, oh, yeah, like Freemasons, like the bad guys, right? They're like some like, Illuminati <laughs> world controlling fucking people. So no one, no, one re no one really knows what the history of it is, you know? I mean, obviously, the, you guys. There was do, a forget me not like, during World War II when the concentration camp happens. A forget me not is a flower, and uh, oh, yeah. the the Masons were being killed, Jews and Christians and everybody alike, at the time, and they would put a forget me not in the lapel, so that the, that's how they knew they were Masons. Yeah, <laughs> so that was one of the symbol. symbols they did during World War II, where they had to forget me not on on their lapel, and, and they knew, you know, all that shit. So mm. it's fucked up, man. But well, we came from Syria, like, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, you know, you know, like before you what you said though, he was like it's, it's not uncommon knowledge that you got Freemasons sort of behind the French Revolution, fueled it up by an American Revolution, plenty of that stuff. So pretty good at working behind the scenes to actually enact global change. Global change. Stuff, you know? Global yeah, change. Big, so in terms of like, you know, and changing sensibilities and the way things are done, creating democracies, taking democracies away, like, big deal shit. I mean, that's in history. It's not a secret. No. And like, so the idea that that couldn't happen still, well, why is that ridiculous? Yeah, no, for sure. It? Absolutely. Dude, that's oh, yeah. what I thought with Tom DeLonge. I'm like, how, how yeah, yeah, Tom yeah. DeLonge show up and talk <clears throat> to some fucking... Chris Mellon and Lou Elizondo and fucking whoever the fuck, like McCasland and whoever the fuck else he's talking to, be like, hey, uh, I'm a brother. Like, and you have to, like, at least entertain. You know what I mean? Like, but like, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah. Okay. And then, like, what if McCasland was like, cool, I want to get this shit done too. But, but he could have talked to somebody else who was like, absolutely not. Fuck you. I'm not going to do this. Right. I mean, but at least he had to entertain that idea and at least like literally whatever Tom DeLonge says, like he was just cool whenever. And yeah, he does have that charisma and to be like pushing the doors and like, you know, like do shit that nobody else does. But he has the brotherhood behind him where he was like, you guys have to listen to me. At least listen to me. 
and they did yeah. oh. and maybe he got a whole bunch of people behind him that were already there going we should do this yeah but so. yeah i mean i hope so i really hope so man like i hope he's not just a, a patsy because like i mean tell me this like say for example in your lodge you're 32 degree yeah mm -hmm. there's a cruise ship. all right so fit so 32 degrees so above that you've got what 33 mm -hmm. and going higher <laughs> no All right. no okay, so, well, I so, mean, the people people say that the 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 Rosicrucian order I exist that that I'm a part of doesn't exist. So they mm -hmm. they don't uh, put it this way. There's people that are 33rd degree Masons that are mad that I'm a Rosicrucian. What? And, I, and I'm not a 33rd degree Mason, right? Mm -hmm. So there's literally people that are pissed. I was told when I became a Rosicrucian not to tell anybody I was a Rosicrucian against my brothers. And these are the guys that I could tell fucking anything in the possible world and they have to have my back and everything else, right? These are the these are the dudes that I have to like the like, like that I feel about you guys. Like no matter what, you guys have my back. Like, you know what I mean? Like nobody's gonna sell me down the river. You guys got my back. You know, this is family kind of shit. And when I became a Rosicrucian, they're like, Don't tell anybody. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Shit, man. And I'm like, and why these that? are my brothers, right? And they're like, yeah, you're brothers, but... The Rosicrucian stuff, like, from what I see, I mean, like, I'm drawn to it the most because of, well, you know why, but, like, um, it's like, because I find it interesting and the history goes back to crazy places, but, like, if there was ever an organization that could link to all of these plots... It's it was the Rosicrucians. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I did. I, I told you both this. I didn't realize it was real until they asked me. I was like, "Yeah, it's fucking not real." They're like, "Hey, um, do you think you want to do this?" I'm like, "That's not real. That doesn't exist." And it was like, "No, it exists." I'm like, "Okay, yeah. cool. Wow, I've been waiting for this shit the whole fucking time. This is what I wanted all of this to be, right? Like, this is what <laughs> this is what I really wanted. To, like, this is all my studies. This is what everything I wanted to be. But like, there's only forty two hundred of us on the planet, and wow. it's like, yeah. why? You know? And then you get into it, and it's like, fuck. It's a college. Well, we really, we really, literally doing research and trying to." scientifically philosophy you know all of this stuff propagate all of the ancient mystery schools and keep it alive right yeah. how do you do that with 4200 fucking dudes but you do it because of what you're tasked with and because of the other part that you're a part of that as keeps you I don't know, i'm not saying that like i'm not telling you this because I, uh, I'm scared of the repercussions or whatever, whatever, but it's like the amount of knowledge you get and not of just like people telling you things, but of physical and emotional and spiritual or whatever, when you go through the degrees, like you are imparted with, which doesn't make any sense. Like if you literally, you literally go through the degrees and you're physically affected and you're mentally affected and you're psychologically affected and psychically affected and all of these things happen because of the ritual and that ritual has existed from what they tell me from time in memoriam. So mm. like if I go through the degrees that I've gone through and you guys go through the degrees in England, it's the same fucking thing. And that is the, is preserved for throughout you know history right those things can't end i can't remember oh. i can't remember like um which hermetic quote this is but it is and I, I don't think i've got it entirely correct but um there was a, a hermetic quote which was something like uh you know like meat meat for the meat for men milk for babes and it's the idea that this knowledge is not for everyone and that not everyone even deserves to know this knowledge but that there is like a level of oral tradition and secret keeping that's kept s secure so that it can continue on and not get diluted by essentially the idiocy of the masses. That's kind of how I, that's how it was interpreted is like, you know, like meat for men, milk for babes. And so like, let the rest of them kind of like, you know, bleat and complain. And then a small group of people are trying to push society forward in the background with this secret knowledge. And like, you know, I, I think that's kind of what they were saying. 
I remember, like, you know, like, um, same as, like, both of you guys have said, you know, you kind of, like, you, you go looking for people like you to make you feel better about some of this crazy shit. I remember, like, talking to you ages ago, Jay, about, you know, going to go and speak to my uncle, like, who's, you know, he's an academic and he knows a little bit about some of the weird side of things. Um, but him, for me, it was kind of like, he, he really just sat me down and was like, you know, like, as a man to a man, like, you know, I'm in my 40s and he's in his 60s. He goes, what's upsetting you is the fact that you've got four decades into your life, you're in your fifth decade of your life, and you've learned things that are ground-shakingly real that you didn't know existed, or beliefs, or your structures of crumble. I can't remember how he put it. And it was clear he'd been there as well. He didn't want to talk about the actual ins and outs or any of the details of it. He just was just kind of like, eh, just accept that. that this, sometimes these things happen, and you might not be able to take it. Or you, if you are able to take it, it'll sit within you and then it'll make you even more curious. Strange conversation to have, but like, it's really true, man. Like, yeah, I, I find that it's like, if you can cope with it, let it grow. If you can't move away from it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, there's some people who have experiences, whether it be a UFO or a ghost or a deity, and they change their lives and they look for the information. Then there's people that completely lose their fucking minds dealing with the same thing. And then there's people who just go, no, that didn't even happen. I'm not even <laughs> looking at it. And so it's like, there's, def yeah. there's definitely like a core group of people that go, I am going to learn from this and I want to know what this means. And then a lot of people just go, no. Ah, fuck it. That no, I, no. I, I eat a bad sushi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I should have got the right. gas station sushi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <that's> silly gas <laughs> station. Guys, I'm gonna wife. have to. I'm gonna have to go because I'm like really yeah, fucking me too. tired me now. Too. All right, a lot of fun guys. Fun Oof. guys, you guys are fun guys. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're the fun guys. <laughs> oh. For real, for real. I don't, I don't right. envy you having to do the editing on this one. This is gonna. Be I don't even know what the fuck <laughs> I'm gonna do with that. I don't even know. So we're a forum now with Lou Elizondo, Chris Bredso, and Jarley. That's going to yeah, come out. Cult. That's it's, a new thing, a right? It's a cult. Yeah, it's a cult. It's a cult. I, I think yeah. what it is is like the MK Ultra thing. Yeah, man, I, dude, I think you're right. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lie, but Anjali gives me those MK Ultra vibes. Like she's been fucked with in her time. Like it just. Yeah, like, Mark Sims. Yeah, Mark yeah, Sims, yeah. Mark Sims yeah. is a fucking alien. Mark Sims is from yeah. Venus. I don't even give a fuck. I will say it right now. I'm going to keep this part in. Mark Sims is from Venus. That motherfucker doesn't belong here because I've never seen anybody like just posting up behind anybody going. Yeah, we're done shit, right? So, but I want two chains gold, like right? Mark Sims has got two chains of these big gold motherfucking things. Search, search if you search it up though, what you'll find is the like, Transcendence Project is Anjali's thing. And Mark Sims is connected to that. So Mark Sims is connected to Anjali. Mark Sims appears with Danny Sheehan. Danny Sheehan appears with Lou Elizondo. Lou Elizondo appears with everybody else. Oh, it's just fucking crazy shit. You look great, John. I'm Mark yeah. Sims. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, so when you say it like that and you go, all right, like, seriously, you got the connections, it's too much. Like, if you Google Mark Sims and what did they say it was called? Transcendental Productions, whatever they call it, Transcendence Productions. Like, there's all things where Anjali's on their profile, bigging him up, like from six months ago or something. Hmm. And then you see the conferences starting where it's got him, Anjali, Whitley Stryber, um, who else? All, all of them, yeah. You just look at him just like, this is insanity. It's like watching an MK Ultra fucking advert. Beat up. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know anything oh, about it. It's a cult. Like, seriously, like Danny Sheehan is now out there to talk about uh, contact protocols. Um, Mark Sims, from what I can see, is all about the C5, C6 now, actually. It's not C5. Um, with Danny Sheehan saying the same things. And, and Jarley's there, too. They're going to have this thing. This is Mark Sims. Sims. This is Mark Sims. Smiling like he's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, brilliant but, pair of American <laughs> thumpers right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lovely white I just want, I just want... I got this radio. Like, hold on a second, watch. Yeah. Hey now. Um but yeah, like it's I'm gonna call in some aliens. Oh, like, <laughs> oh shit. So, so 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 all of a sudden, Anjali, uh Whitley Striver, Lou, Mark Weird Sims. Yeah, scary man. It yeah, makes it me is. Not, it makes it me is. like you not want to be part of any of this. It's not but, call, it's cause that's not coming in right now. Hold on a second. Oh. Have some <laughs> 
That's why I like. Jay, take a screenshot of this. Jay, take a screenshot. Where is it? Wait, wait, wait. Keep holding it. Keep holding it. There we go. <laughs>